Congratulations, Canes, from Channel 4, home of the Orange Bowl. They're richly talented and confident. They thrive in prime time, and they've won 44 straight games at the Orange Bowl. They're ranked as college football's number one team, the Miami Hurricanes. Over the last decade, Miami has dominated college football, winning three national championships. Their high-tech, pro-style offense showcasing receivers and quarterbacks destined for NFL glory. Number 12, Jim Kelly, Bernie Kosar, and the latest to lead the Hurricanes, number 13, Gino Toretta. He's used a covey of swift, sure-handed receivers to generate a high-fly, big-play offense past Miami team celebrated their success over zealously earning a bad boy reputation mindful of that image this year's hurricanes have toned down their emoting but not their confidence we don't talk about hey we want to win the Big East we want to win the conference we want to win a couple of games we say hey 12 and 0 a 12th win tonight would give Miami a claim to its fourth national title in just nine years but in Miami's path the Nebraska Cornhuskers the teams are as different as their nicknames. Hurricanes, high velocity, aerodynamic, explosive. Cornhuskers, solid, basic, persevering. They're as different as the cities they call home. Miami, big city, cosmopolitan, tropical. Lincoln, steady is the rhythm of the Midwest seasons. And they're as different as their style of play. Miami strikes quickly with its awesome aerial attack while Nebraska relies on the nation's number one running game, a style totally in Cornhusker character. We're just a bunch of corn-fed boys, and we're coming into a bunch of cocky, high-life, fast-lane fellas, and it's going to be hell. It's going to be a battle. Distinctly, two cities, two teams, two styles, and two titles at stake. The Orange Bowl crown, and perhaps for Miami, another national championship. The 58th Orange Bowl Classic featuring unbeaten top-ranked Miami against the Big A co-champion, 11th-rated Nebraska. 1992 opened in South Florida with a cloudburst. The rains for the moment have stopped and the enthusiasm builds toward the kickoff of a game with national championship implications and part of the enthusiasm and color provided by the Nebraska marching band, the Cornhusker fight song. Nebraska that you'll see in this highly partisan Miami crowd tonight. There are 8,000 fans here from Lincoln and surrounding areas in the great state of Nebraska as we wish you. My partner Bill Walsh, all of us from NBC Sports, a happy and healthy New Year. And it'll be a happy time for the team that wins tonight. If it's Nebraska, it'll be one of the major upsets of this holiday season. If it's Miami, they can stake claim to another national title. Uh, let's examine Nebraska's chances. Here's a team that traditionally runs the football well and again led the nation in running. Is it good enough to keep it away from Miami's offense? Well, they're running on, on artificial surfaces in the Big 8. I don't know what that means here tonight because it's wet on that field. But they have this. 350 yards a game running the football, two very talented tailbacks, a fine running and passing quarterback, and a lot of confidence, Dick. They really feel they can win this ball game. Now let's take it on the other side. Not many have been successful in stopping Miami's high-tech passing offense. We watched them in practice. They're as impressive as any NFL team's passing offense, at least in practice. How does Nebraska try to slow uh, Miami down? They slow them down with their own offense because defensively, the problem with Miami over the years, they don't just have one or two fast receivers. They'll have a bevy of five, six, or seven that practice against defensive backs with speed. So they play a different kind of football. So Nebraska can't match up down the field with all of that speed. So the pass rush is going to have to be there. And Dick, I worry about the pass rush because the middle of that field can be soft. And if those pass rushers from Nebraska 
don't have good traction, it could be a long, long night for the Nebraska secondary. Well, we're bringing up to date on the weather report. The forecast for the rest of the evening is clearing. It has not rained for an hour. It was a torrential rain at times this afternoon. But the turf here at the Orange Bowl is prescription turf. They have the ability to uh, literally suck the water out from beneath that grass. And it's remarkably in good condition. In fact, uh, John Dockery is standing by as he joins us on our NBC crew here on New Year's Night in Miami. Let's get a report from Doc on how fast is the track. Dick, you're exactly right. As remarkable is the word. It rained most of the day, as you know. Some of it was heavy rains. And this field, a few hours ago, had puddles all over. But they came out with the vacuum cleaners. And as you mentioned, it is prescription turf. They have pumps which suck the water underneath and then pump it out. So the field is incredibly good. It is almost perfect. Maybe a little slick on the top, but otherwise perfect. So it shouldn't be a factor, Dick. All right, Doc, another element, as you've heard throughout the course of this day in our reports on NBC, Omar Soto is a Miami native, the only uh, player on the Nebraska squad. He was hoping to come back here and perform before his family and friends Some 60 were going to be here Cubans for Nebraska. Well, it was announced yesterday, and Tom Osborne told us, I think, initially, and it was with a heavy uh, emotions and a deep frown on his face that a story on Soto being ineligible had been held by a South Florida reporter, at least this is according to Nebraska coaches, until the day before the game and then announced that Soto actually had played in a scrimmage game that negates his eligibility this year, which should cost also Nebraska a couple of games in forfeiture during the course of the year. But more importantly is the game itself. It's sad for Soto. He won't play. Well, what will be the impact on the rest of the Nebraska team knowing they may have to forfeit their co-championship in the Big A? Well, I don't think the infraction from what I've heard is serious enough to lose any games, to have any forfeited, to be honest with you. Soto was to start. He was to play initially for his home friends, his family from Cuba. But behind him, we have a marvelous running back, Lance other people. Lewis, yeah. Yes, and so I don't think it will affect Nebraska. It might have even found and bonded them to really make sure they give it everything they got for this ball game. Now the Big A champion is the home team in the Orange Bowl. So despite the fact Miami plays in its home stadium, they are the visitors. So there won't be any of that smoke. Oh yeah, they did it anyway. <laughs> Even though Nebraska requested it not happen, here come the number one Kings. third year 44 year old Dennis Erickson what a rare opportunity this bright young offensive minded coach with a chance at three years at Miami and two national titles and now the Cornhuskers from Lincoln Nebraska and there is Soto himself cheering his teammates onto the field a loss to Washington and a tie at Colorado marring a perfect year for Nebraska. Tom Osborne's 19th team, all 19 have won nine games or more and all 19 in a bowl game. Well, the attitude of this Cornhusker team and reacting to the Soto incident, let's go back down to John Dockery. You know, Dick, I spoke to Omar Soto moments before he went into the locker room. He said he was going to go in to talk to the team and apologize to them. And in watching Nebraska in the warm-up before the game, and right now you get two senses. One, they're very upset, and they feel sad for their teammate who wanted to play so much tonight in this game before his home fans. The other is a tinge of anger. Why did this all happen now? Why the timing of this announcement on Soto? They are as a little bit of an edge on Nebraska, so I don't get any sense of deflation or upset. There was some distraction, but I'll tell you, the emotions are running deep. It'll be interesting to see how they come out moments from now when we kick off. Dick? Thanks, Doc, and here is the coin toss. Uh, Joe, Joe DiMaggio is the Grand Marshal of the King Orange Jamboree Parade. We'd hoped he might be out there. We'll see him later. Hopefully he'll drop by our booth. This is a reenactment of the coin toss. It's already been won by Miami. And Carlos Huerta there indicating that they've won the toss and will defer to the second half. This is commonplace for the Hurricanes. They're the best team in the nation 
in stopping their opponents from scoring, averaging uh, just only nine points a game against the Miami defense. So they want to put that defense on the field initially. 9.1 points per game. The Huskies of Washington in the battle for number one, 9.2, followed by Alabama. The Tide has already won its bowl game. And you know, it's interesting, Dick. Uh, Miami has given up a lot of yardage, but just a few points. So Nebraska does have a chance with that running game, 353 yards, 6.5 per rush. That is as good as you can get. And by far the best in the nation again. Every rushing attempt gains six and a half average. There's 54-year-old uh, Tom Osborne, the Gary Cooper of Midwest football, his laconic, solid way. Dr. Osborne has had his hands full the last uh, 36 hours in trying to rally uh, the emotions of this Nebraska team. Uh, hurt and anger and disappointment and uh, anxiety and the unknown. What will happen to their season and their record? Will they be champions that all will unfold. And Dennis Erickson, he's in the catbird seat. The Canes, a powerful offense, a lightning quick in scoring, uh, perhaps the fastest collegiate team on offense and defense in the nation. Let's go back down to John Dockery. You know, Dick, a little gamesmanship before the game. Nebraska did not want Miami to have that home game feel. It is their home field, so they didn't want them to have their usual smoke machine. So what happened was Sebastian the Ibis went out and borrowed a fire extinguisher from the local firehouse, and that's what you saw, the smoke from Sebastian's makeshift fire extinguisher because they weren't allowed to bring the full-blown smoke machine in here today. So before the game, a little gamesmanship between Osborne and Erickson, Miami and Nebraska as we get ready for this Orange Bowl. Yes. All right, Doc, and Carlos Huerta as the Miami and Nebraska players uh, offer their uh, support from the sidelines and their traditional raising of the helmets. So Huerta. Apparently a great NFL career ahead for him, one of the top kickers in the country. And deep to return for the Cornhuskers will be Tyrone Hughes. He's playing with a heavily bandaged left wrist, as you can see, a fracture, two fractures of that wrist uh, midseason. And with him is Nate Turner. Now, Dick, we might see the shock of a lifetime, Nebraska suddenly playing a Star Wars team in Miami who are so much faster than anyone they played against, even on their kickoff coverage, a case like this, being setting up to make a block and the man running right past you before you're there to take care of him. And this 1992 Orange Bowl underway, and Huerta roots it into the end zone to Hughes, going to take it out. And he stopped at the 11-yard line. C.J. Richardson, number 19, who led Miami with 20 special teams tackles this year. This is Keith and McCann, a fifth-year senior from Grand Prairie, Texas. His offensive line weighing nearly 300 pounds. Lundberg, Wiegert, Scott, Shields, and Borboom with him in the backfield. Lance Lewis at fullback. Derrick Brown, over 1,300 yards rushing this year. Turner and Bostic, the wide receivers. William Washington, the tight end. From deep in their own end, it is Derrick Brown straight ahead for four yards and corralled by a quartet of hurricane tacklers led by Michael Barrow, number 56. Here are the Miami defenders, Patrick Hamlet, Miller. Medeiros is a sophomore, had 10 sacks to lead the team. The linebackers, they run like wide receivers. Darren Smith, Michael Barrow, Jesse Armstead, Lightning Quick, James and McNeil at the corners, Farms and All-America, Daryl Williams at safety. Second down, six. McKeithen with a noise, shouting out that relay by Abdul Muhammad, number 27. A blitz. And brought down Anthony Hamlet from Delray Beach, Florida. Makes the sack. Hamlet simply split the center guard gap. He was lined up, up in it. You'll see him just blitz right through that gap. And the right guard, Shields, the best player in that offensive line for Nebraska, didn't adjust to it. So no one blocked that big sack. No one blocked him. And Hamlet, who says he doesn't read Shakespeare, but boy, he loves gangster movies. 
has his second sack of the year, and Washington apparently is going to maintain its uh, bragging rights as they're well ahead of Michigan in the Rose Bowl. And Derek Brown straight ahead to the 14, and that'll bring the punting team on the field for Nebraska. Well, I guess this is why Miami wants to kick off at the start of a game. Their speed beat the Nebraska blockers to the spot, so they they made the stop around the 10-yard line, and on three straight plays, their speed has shocked Nebraska. So I'm sure on that Nebraska sideline, they know they're going to have to pick it up and move quicker. That's Kevin Williams, number five. He returned three punts for touchdowns, gained more yardage on punt returns than any man in the nation this year. Williams lets it land. And touched by Nebraska, Acholo at the 49-yard line. Now so that is field position, Dick. That is the field position they wanted. 38-yard punt, Gino Toretta, the quarterback for the Miami Hurricanes. And part of that uh, great tradition of quarterbacks at this institution has Searcy, Barber, Harris, Jones, and Cristobal in the offensive front. Larry Jones, the big young fullback, Spencer, Thomas, Copeland, and Bell, they all run like the wind. Only Jones lined up behind the quarterback from midfield, and it is Jones. And the 235-pound freshman from Gainesville, Florida, has five yards. Well, it's so tough to think rushing the passer and stopping a runner like Jones. It's really difficult. Raymakers, Engelbert, and Perell in the three-man defensive line. Hill, Petko, Anderson, and White are the linebackers. And the pressure will fall on these four trying to cover much man-to-man. -man. Cotton and Leggett at the corners, Carmer and Bird at safety. Now this is the spread formation without a back behind the center. Five fast people able to go straight down the field. On second and five, and Toretta all alone is Williams. And he was out of bounds. No catch. A sure touchdown. But the ball floated wide, and Williams was out of bounds. Oh, they're going to call it a catch. That's the first time that Miami has shown this formation with Williams lined up outside at the snap. He caught it inbound. Yes, he did. He did get the one foot down, and that's all that's required. And Williams only denied a sure touchdown. Now, typically, Williams will come out of the backfield in motion to get to that position. But for the first time this year, they set him out there immediately. The Nebraska defense didn't even spot him prior to the snap. Boy, high-powered Miami. They don't take long to score, and we'll uh, document that in a moment. First and goal at the nine. Jones hit after maybe a gain of a yard by Tyrone Bird, who raced up from safety. And Mike Anderson, the middle backer. It gets a little tougher at this point on the field. A little bit tougher without that room. Boy, do they get in the end zone in a hurry. 39 times they've scored in less than three minutes. Something like 13 or 14 in just one minute. Well, it's that one big play, and it's that field position to start their first drive. Now here they're spread again. Four people spread outside, no tailback. Second and goal. Fumble by Toretta, picks it up, throws it, and it's a touchdown! Lamar Thomas. No, now they say out of bounds and came back in. He caught the ball in play, but had gone out of bounds and came back in immediately an ineligible receiver down in that crowd of photographers in that lower end zone. Tyrone Leggett really looked as though he'd stopped playing when the ball was caught. So we must get an out-of-bounds push. Oh, yeah, clearly out-of-bounds. Now he stopped playing, but if that happens again, Leggett had better keep his eye on his receiver. Impossible to see that corner from even the press box location because all of the extra players, fans, and photographers, third and goal. They're going to blitz. Coretta. Touchdown, Kevin Williams. The fastest.
assist of the Canes. Williams, the sophomore from Dallas, Texas. And Miami has scored quickly in less than four minutes of this first quarter. He's simply going straight up the field and then working across the field. And you see the coverage just isn't there. That speed isn't there to cope with a man running directly across the field with all that room to move. Huerta, who holds the NCAA record for consecutive extra points, 157 broken this year, adds the extra point. It took them one minute and 42 seconds. 7-0 Miami. The 1992 Federal Express Orange Bowl is brought to you by Federal Express. All around the world, our most important package is yours by Mitsubishi Montero, a luxury car with a luxury of four-wheel drive, by Pizza Hut, voted America's favorite pan pizza, and by Budweiser, the beer with a taste as genuine as the people who drink it. Nothing beats a Bud. Back deep to the sea from the Nebraska Cornhuskers. The Miami striking quickly, 7-0. Kevin Williams with a pass as Curtis Cotton, the cornerback, slipped and fell, and only the fact the pass carried Williams to the sidelines denied him the touchdown Curtis on this Cotton, play. Uh, this is the touchdown, and if, and if we have the... Oh, here's the, the play that sets it up. Curtis Cotton, number nine, slipped and fell, and of course now Kevin Williams is simply all by himself. The only thing that bothered him in that case was the ball came too close along the sideline. And then a middle oh, linebacker boy. trying to cover Williams on the yeah, touchdown then Mike play. Anderson, number 48, trying to cover Williams the next time around. It just couldn't be done. And it can be done in practice, but they don't have the same kind of personnel to practice against. Who does? Where to again, gets it deep to Tyrone Hughes at the goal line. Hughes with a crease. Breaking tackles and out to the 31-yard line. A solid return. We get a good look at the touchdown. This is the mismatch that you never want to get right here. A linebacker at 230 pounds trying to cover a man that runs a 40 and documented 4.28. And so it's just not possible to get that done unless you're right on top of him and jam him, and then you're really taking a chance. So for all their practice and preparation, they weren't ready for the speed. They couldn't cope with the speed. So Keith and McCant and Nebraska start from the 31. McCant going to throw. And throws it to over the Miami bench. No one open. Well, that was your typical fake off-tackle play and then quarterback keep. We see Steve DeBerg doing this often uh, in the NFL. And so McCant would fake to the left, come out to the right, and Miami had it totally handled. Everyone covered. Those are good numbers for Nebraska quarterback. Those of you who have followed uh, the Huskers through the years, you have to go back 15 years to Vince Ferragamo to find a quarterback who threw for more yardage. McCant, um, the Arlington, Texas area, handing off to Lance Lewis, the fullback. He's a junior from Scott City, Kansas. He played in all those games when Omar Soto was on the sidelines with a fractured leg and Soto sidelined uh, in disappointment tonight as so rolled ineligible. Now Lewis averaged 7.8 per carry as a ball carrier in the big eight and in the previous schedule. But at this point, they're not really getting anybody on track because the defensive line of Miami is getting to the point of attack quicker than the blockers are. McCamp off the chest of Bostic. He catches it, but it'll be shy of the first down. In fact, it gained uh, maybe only a yard. Jesse Armstead right there. And the Miami fans cheer their defense. It's going to be tough. It really is. And one of the problems in watching them practice the three days we've been here on the field with them is the scout team for Nebraska were really walk-on and redshirt players who just couldn't emulate or simulate what this Miami team can actually do. So they just haven't seen it in reality. Sticky. A high floater. Williams going to let it uh, bounce, and it takes a Nebraska roll. Might have hit a Husker player, though, way upfield at the 34-yard line. I believe that's where they're going to mark it, at the 34. And we have a timeout, 925, left in the first quarter. They played only five and a half minutes, and Miami already with a touchdown and the ball at their own 34-yard line. Meanwhile, in Pasadena, California, the Huskies of Washington 
by 20 over the Wolverines of Michigan late in the fourth quarter. So it appears Washington will remain unbeaten 12 and 0 and Miami trying to take that measure as they go for their 12th straight of this season. Hand off and slipping and sliding. Larry Jones. And uh, the Fiesta Bowl is now a final and Penn State with a roaring second half to defeat the Volunteers of Tennessee 42 17. Now as long as Miami will run inside people like Mike Petco who made the stop number 99 the last play will be fine. But what they tend to do is circumvent those people and throw the ball over their head so they're never really a major factor in the game. And this is it. Right over the sidelines and caught by Copeland. Horace Copeland, who had 31 grabs on the season, hit immediately by Tyrone Leggett. Now Copeland's simply going to go downfield and stop Horace and be Copeland. the outlet receiver. He's not going to be the primary receiver. He's just going to pivot. Now, meanwhile, Gino Toretta is looking downfield and finally comes out to him. And he gets the ball quickly enough to the point that the defender can't respond. Copeland, like so many of his teammates at wide receiver and tight end, rangy, and they all leap well. Three different receivers at 6-3. Now there's a play change, and Gino Toretta has become expert at this. Hand off to Jones, and he has the first down out to the 47-yard line. Now I couldn't identify why the play changed, but it sure worked. So he just ran a simple off-tackle play, and uh, because the defense was going to take a, well, you can see a big void in the, on a hole in the defensive line setup, and when that occurs, he's just going to audible right into it. Stephen McGuire was the top fullback for the Hurricanes and leading rusher on the year, 608 yards. A serious knee injury against Florida State, and then Martin Patton replaced him. Patton has uh, been uh, disqualified from this game as he uh, involved in an off-campus incident. So that is clarified. He's not eligible to play. So Jones, the third stringer, freshman, he's 235, and he gets the call again. He's to the 49-yard line, a pickup of almost three. John Perello, the defensive tackle on the right side, in on the stop, along with Mike Anderson. Now, as long as Nebraska will spread that front to pass rush, they're going to run between those defensive linemen. It's that simple. Now, it might be only three or four yards, but it's going to force them to think just a little bit before they really come up the field. Jones to the sidelines as, again, Miami operates with no running back, five receivers. Tight end on the right side. In this case, the three safety deep in the middle isn't going to be of much help because there's so many receivers. Toretta to Thomas. Look at that leaping catch by Thomas. Oh, my. Now, we can demonstrate very easily where the problem is. In this case, a free safety in the middle would have to cover a lot of ground in either direction to help. But now, meanwhile, Thomas is going to run a go pattern and then make a sensational catch. And so you not only have the formation giving the defense a problem, you have a spectacular athlete way up over the top to make the catch. And Dick, did you, can you recall those practice sessions? A two-minute offense as we watched it. Every ball was caught, and when necessary, a great catch was made. These guys are just simply spectacular, splendid pass receivers. Thomas, an all-state basketball player as well, and played in four games with the Kings basketball team last year. Well, he really rebounded that one. And finally, the ball hits the ground on a Toretta pass. That time, they wanted to throw a delay pattern to Daryl Spencer inside, and it just didn't develop. The Nebraska people didn't retreat far enough, and it really wasn't a very good call for this point on the field. Just not enough operating room for that kind of play. Toretta on the year hit on 55% of his passes, 20 touchdowns and eight intercepted, threw for over 3,000 yards. Big yardage for number 13s in this town, quite common. And Marino, of course, is counterpart with the Dolphins. Carries those same two digits. And it's Jones feeling his way, and there are plenty of red shirts there to stop him. Well, now this is the first time we can get, really get a third down situation and see if Nebraska has a formula. I'm sure they'll substitute to make sure they have at least five, more likely six defensive backs in the game. They can't go through the Mike Anderson incident again where a linebacker is trying to cover the fastest man on the field. 
A final now from the Rose Bowl. Washington, a commanding win, impressively, 34-14 over Big Ten champion Michigan. Here, 7-0 Miami, third down and 10 from the Husker 12-yard line. Toretta underneath, and Jones is hit immediately by Ernie Beeler, number 23. Beeler, a sophomore from Plainfield, New Jersey. So they Carlos did. Huerta comes in to try a field goal for Miami. Well, that was all handled well. Down the field, the receivers for Miami were sort of forced right back into the inline. There was nowhere to throw the ball. So in that particular case, Nebraska got their job done. Again, no real pressure, though, Dick. No pressure on, on uh, Gino Toretta. Huerta, whose uh, uncle is a physics professor at the University of Miami, and he has used physics to really study inside out the art of place kicking. And missed only four on the year. This will be a 24-yard attempt. Goal will be from 24 yards. Saw a little difference on that sideline there by an assistant coach and Tom Osborne. There a little confusion as to they had 12 men on the field. I believe recovery. 12 men on the field, and they may need that extra man. So late score. Field goal. Uh, Nebraska having to spend a timeout. Too many men on the field, and now Huerta, 24-yard attempt. Joe Moore, a tight end to hold. And he drills it. Ten nothing Hurricanes. Well, in a sense, Nebraska had a minor victory there in find a, finally regrouping and holding off Miami to three points. Dennis Erickson's team on an early course to victory. Happy New Year from the Orange Bowl in Miami, where the locals are pleased with the early 10-point lead for the Hurricanes. And Huerta had to kick it off to Turner and to Hughes. Huerta's kick spinning deep, and this one will go out of the end zone. It'll be Nebraska and McCant at the 20 as we go to New York and Gail Gardner. It's all over in Pasadena. Washington quarterback Mark Brunel in for Billy Joe Hobart. 38-yard touchdown pass to Mario Bailey as the Huskies put in their claim for the national title, beating Michigan in the Rose Bowl 34-14. Let's go back to Dick. So congratulations to Don James, unbeaten Huskies from the University of Washington in Seattle. Miami will try to match that effort against Nebraska as McCann trouble with a lateral and Miami covers it at the 15 yard line. No touchdown. Miami's ball at the 15. Well, Sonny Lubick, the defensive coordinator for Miami, spoke of that being the most dangerous play in the Nebraska offense. With Keith and McCant carrying that option out, they call it a load option. You saw Shields pull, good blocking, but see how it's attacked. McNeil attacks that play, and there just isn't anywhere to go with it. Just blew up in their face. And so they're just attacking the thing that Nebraska does best, and it just blew up. No question about it. Now, how do they think of running that again unless they can get a different configuration formation-wise or something? McNeil made the hit. The ball was uh, loose most of the play. McCann barely got the toss away. So a gift opportunity for Miami, and Toretta goes to work. And nailed by Mike Petko, the senior linebacker for the Huskers. Lamar Thomas downfield. Well, that had to be a last instant throw. There may have been a penalty in the end zone. We don't see the flag. I thought Toretta was out of bounds when he threw it. But from our angle, maybe I'm mistaken. Oh, no, he wasn't. And Thomas kept his feet in. So, as we saw him in practice, it was just startling to see these young people conduct a passing drill where whether the throw was on target or not, and most of them were, everything gets caught. I mean, they're a marvelously just quick and tremendous hands. Just great agility. Jones plowing inside the five, and that'll be first and goal Miami. Anderson and Bird with a tackle, and 
with 4.40 left in this first period. Four yards away from a 17-0 early lead are the Hurricanes. Uh, Larry Jones averaged five yards a carry, so he's a legitimate running back, but it's really a change-up part of the game. The deep pass is most important. The shorter passing game controls the ball. Then the run, in a sense, keeps you honest. Miami goes to two tight ends. Coleman Bell and Joe Moore book in. With Thomas wide left. Copeland split to the right side. Toretta to Thomas, and he was checked at the line of scrimmage incomplete. Good job by Tyrone Leggett, number three, the cornerback. Now, Leggett did a real job of simply stiffing the receiver, just simply stiffing uh, the receiver. In this case, Thomas really couldn't get anywhere. Just bang right there, and it's over. It's that one shot, and it's going to take things like that, but the problem is, in that case, Miami had simply two wide receivers and two tight ends. Now, as they come out of the huddle, they're going to work the same formation, but as soon as they spread it out, they get different kinds of mismatches. They have the speedy Kevin Williams to the right. You give to Jones running left. And Larry Jones has bumped out of bounds around the two-yard line. Maybe the one. Leggett again got a piece of him with help from Perella, 92. In this case, Nebraska now can play their own Tackle game. Two-yard line, Perella. not that much room to have to cover or protect. And they can play that physical game that they're noted for. They Three really can the bear down now. And you'd have Third to think it's going to be a play pass, but you, you feel pretty darn confident they'll stop the run. Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator of the Cornhuskers, he knew it would be a tough task. Three tight ends now for Miami, and Jason Marucci joins Jones in the backfield behind Toretta on third and goal, outside the one, changing the play again. And may have run out of time as flags go down, and Jones is right to the goal line. Now, if he didn't make it, what an unfortunate circumstance for Nebraska because you, you take five yards away from Miami, just opens up the field to throw ball. the ball. Ball start. Ball start. Offense. Offense. Repeat third down. third down. That whistle came a little early, and now Nebraska is going to have to send in their entire nickel or dime package, the pass defense group, to try to defend that 15-yard area uh, that Miami's so famous in handling. The critical factor, Dick, is that they have so many of these receivers. They can go to Chris Jones, they can go to, to uh, Kevin Williams, they can go to any number of people to make the one-on-one -on -one catch. And you see them spread out to their right with three receivers. But Kevin Williams to the near side. There's another flag, and the throw is knocked away and almost intercepted by Nebraska. Is Ernie Beeler and uh, Tyrone Bird That's right there, and Pat complete. Engelbert put pressure. On the thrower, Toretta. It looked like Rudy Barber, uh, left guard, moved just before the snap. He pulled out of there. That, again, is unfortunate for, uh, well, they can decline that penalty on the incomplete pass and uh, force Miami to try another field goal. But the field position, you... you... Illegal motion. Illegal motion. Offense. Offense. Repeat third down. Third down. The right. field position, Miami is always down deep in the other team's well, territory. It's been that case the throughout the year, and so people are just scrambling to stay in the ball game. Scrambling to stay in the game. Nebraska has yet to make their decision on accepting or declining the penalty. You would think they'd want to decline it. The penalty has been declined. Fourth down. Fourth down. Fourth down. And uh, here comes Huerta and the field goal crew for Miami. Well, he dodged uh, another bullet, so to speak, by just, uh, let's just say, acceding to a three-point play. This, like the first field goal, will be a little closer, in fact. 24-yard attempt. First was good from 27. Tough angle, but Huerta is right on target. And in less than 11 minutes, Miami's lead is built to 13. Back at the Orange Bowl, that Nebraska band hoping they can uh, play their fight song in celebration of the score. Meanwhile, let's go down to John Dockery. You know, Dick, you talk about Miami, you talk about one of the most successful programs in the country, obviously, a mystique, a tradition, and Dennis Erickson builds on that. Behind me, along the sidelines, are over a dozen 
former players, many of them active NFL players right now. And imagine being a Miami defensive lineman, as happened moments ago, and on the bench as your coach was talking to you, Cortez Kennedy and Jerome Brown were there as well, giving you encouragement. Huerta to Tyrone Hughes, who will kneel down and take the touch back at the 20. Well, Huerta blends beautifully into this style of football. You can't get a kickoff return, Dick. You can't get field position even in a kicking game. And this makes it doubly difficult. Well, the fourth possession for Nebraska, three and out on the first two. They fumbled on the first play of the third, yet to make a first down. And then went to their special, the best play they have, their load option, as they call it, and it was blown up by the aggressive defense. Out of the eye. And it's the tailback, Derek Brown, met after a one-yard game. Boy, do they fly to the ball. Number 31 is Darrell Williams, the All-America junior from Miami, and Jesse Armstead was there with him. There's Williams. He runs the 100 and, or the 40 and 4-3-4, and then he feels that he might come out as a junior in the NFL draft. Well, three interceptions this year, a number of broken pass plays. But that time, Eric Miller and Anthony Hamlet blitzed right over the guards and just took them right back off the line of scrimmage. McCant shouting his play change. Got some time. And he went open. No one is open. Finally mm -hmm. along the sidelines and obscured by the Miami bench. What's the call here? It goes to Dan Pleasant, number 82. Well, and is complete. Well, that was a very fortunate play, uh, no question about it, because in reality, no one was open. And finally, this is just sort of a last-ditch effort right along that sideline, coming back toward the ball, actually catching it a yard out of bounds. And apparently the call now, not good. He was out of bounds, his feet on the sidelines. There were just two people downfield that time, and Kevin McCant, Keith and McCant had really nowhere to throw the ball. McCant, third and nine, having trouble hearing. And the crowd recognizing his problems, just hike it up another few levels. And McCant caught from behind. You just can't outrun this defense. They are so quick, and that's Rusty Medeiros and Kevin Patrick, Patrick 86, who makes the tackle. He's from Lake Worth. He's just a sophomore. A sophomore, 6'4", 255 pounds. Now you can imagine how he'll turn out in a couple of years. But they've taken Nebraska out of their game, and I didn't expect this. Now, maybe at halftime there'll be adjustments. But when you can rush for 350 yards a game and you can't even get a first down in the first half, you're in deep, deep, deep trouble. So three and out again for Nebraska. Stiggy under some pressure. And it's Kevin Williams, and he'll put pressure on a defense. And they're able to corral him. Nate Turner, number 22, makes the tackle, and the flag goes down. Looks like there's a big clip right by the, right by the reception of the ball. 36 yards on the punt, five yards return, and now the penalty. And clipping it is. Nebraska is going to have to figure out a way to run that option play before this half is over because that's all they've got to get McCant out in the Clipping. open. On the return. First down. Because everything else has been taken away. Now you'll see right on the left of the screen the clip itself right from behind right there. That was the clip. So an official 30 yards away saw it, but players sometimes don't understand that in the kicking game, virtually every player is observed by the officials. You can hardly get away with anything. This is the worst field position for the Hurricanes starting a drive at their own 30, leading 13-0, 2.19 left in the first quarter. Toretta with all kinds of time, but his receiver is covered. Good defense downfield by the Cornhuskers, and Copeland just could watch that one sail over his 6-3 uh, night. In watching uh, Gino Toretta, uh, four different occasions on the field practicing, I'd have to say he's an NFL quarterback. He'll be one soon. He's got really everything. He's not absolutely as quick on his feet as a Montana or a Cunningham, but he's got a fine arm, and he's strong from a big, solid base of throwing the ball. Excellent arm. His brother, Jeff Toretta, was the backup to Tester Verde here at Miami. Here's Williams with a blocker. 
One man to beat. No one's going to catch him. Kevin Williams. Touchdown, Miami. A flag is down. A flag is down back at the 30-yard line. And they'll bring Ooh. it back. A long oh, way back. Boy, did, was that play beautifully executed. It was a short, a quick, short reverse to Williams from a wing-back position. And once he broke it, Rudy Barber pulled ahead of him, the left guard, did a fine job of blocking. There had to be a hole somewhere, most likely uh, by the tight end. That typically is the case. But once Holy he turned point. it on. Offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. The officials from the Big Ten, the referee today, Ron Winter. Rudy Barber pulling, turns on his man and hooks out to the outside. And apparently that was the major problem because it didn't look as though he had to do that. And it didn't look as though he really attempted to hold, but his arm did get caught out there. And it was at the critical turn of the right, corner. Right where the official is going to be looking, that side judge. So instead of 20 nothing, it remains 13 nothing, and Miami second and 21. Kennedy a yard behind the line of center. Toretta underneath the Coleman Bell is tied in, and Travis Hill finally gets him out of bounds and a flag down. Usually a face mask in that situation. Bell, who caught no passes two years ago and only one last year and came up with 27 this season. And as a tight end, he's averaging about 14 yards a catch, which is very, very good for that position. And that time, uh, Gino Toretta held the ball. He had somebody coming right down his throat. He knew it was a delay pattern to Bell. He just simply held the ball. In fact, you talked to, I talked to Lamar Five Thomas. Yards, face mask, penalized from the end of the run. First down. First down. And you'll see the face mask at the end of the game that they play. Just a touch of it. But Lamar Thomas, uh, one of the best receivers on the team, he feels that Gino is so tough. Twitter's, Toretta is so tough that he likes to take the hits. He really thinks he's playing football when he takes those shots and gets up. Get a first down, 19 on the play and five yards on the penalty. And here comes Jones into Nebraska territory to the 48 before Cotton. Can bump him out of bounds after a gain of about eight. Jones and Lamar Thomas. Thomas, uh, the wide receiver that made that startling, uh, spectacular leaping catch earlier, are both from Gainesville, Florida, the home of the University of Florida Gators. And and uh, folks up there, University of Florida country, disappointed they migrated south to Miami. In fact, Thomas, the outspoken wide receiver, he, he was booed at graduation. He'd already announced he's going to Miami when he graduated from high school in Gainesville. His classmates booed him. Second and short. Jones has enough. To the 41 of Nebraska. First down with 141 remaining in the opening quarter. This Unstoppable. Is what, uh, this is what coaches have. Defensive coaches, Tackle head coaches have nightmares about when you're, when you're outgunned as a team. You know, the best football, Dick, no question now is high school football in Florida. That is why the, the three major universities here are thriving. The programs are stronger. They start younger. They, they have 65-pound leagues with full-time coaches. So kids start younger. They get more training. They have spring practice. They have the weather. Yeah, they have the weather. And that's why these teams are dominating college football today. On first down. Good play Good action. Play action. Toretta going for six. But Copeland not quite fast enough to get that one. And he, just to give you an idea of the talent, now look at this young man, Horace Copeland. He's a junior from Orlando. All he did in high school while being a star football player is win the state high jump championship seven feet and win the state long jump championship at 24-5. We're talking about a sensational athlete. He's at 200 pounds. That's the part that in 4.3140 in their timing, they have uh, they had 12 guys under 4.5 on the roster professional teams professional teams can't even conceive of that he moves marucci up toretta throwing off balance but right on the target to lamar thomas and look at that move thomas 
Oh, my. Finally, the ball <laughs> apparently stepped out of bounds at the seven-yard line. The whistle was all that could stop him. He was running through the entire defense. Now, Toretto threw that ball off his back foot. He was being hit as he threw it, Two and it flags. carried at least 35 yards beautifully thrown. Beautifully thrown to Thomas. Maybe Thomas used a little push to free himself from the defense because they're striding back are the Hurricanes to the line of scrimmage. Well, there's talk of uh, number one, Washington or Miami. Double penalty, a clip and offensive interference. Illegal use of the hands. They talk of Washington or Miami. And the, the only variable, would the Washington Huskies have enough fast men on their roster to cover these receivers? That would be a major concern if I were Don James' team uh, in Seattle because there aren't enough fast people That's on the fair. roster. Offense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Loss of down, third down. Here's the interference. That was a clip, no question about it. But there, if here it is coming, now you see the grab and the push off. And now that is pretty technical. Both guys really had problems. That time, Leggett had to make contact because he was beaten otherwise. But again, I say, I just wonder if, if Don James' team could could field enough people with the speed to handle these receivers. I know the Washington Huskies have the pass rush. We've seen that. They could really do damage that way. But downfield, who knows? Here's where Nebraska needs some pressure on third and 25. Toretta sends out five receivers, and he goes up on top again. And it's too long for Thomas. A little bump, and the Miami fans wanted a penalty on Curtis Cotton. And another flag is down, and it's holding against Miami. But on uh, bringing up fourth down, it would appear Nebraska will decline that one. Well, there are any number of schools that could go to this kind of offense uh, at the collegiate level, but who can get this kind of talent holding, holding. to run it? Offense. Penalties decline. Fourth down. Because the plays are rather simple. Corey Dixon floats back to return the punt for Nebraska. He's from Dallas. In fact, he's quite proud of the fact that he beat Kevin Williams in the 100 meters in high school in Dallas. Williams says, uh, well, I was just coming off football practice. I got him later. Off the side of the foot is the punt by Paul Snyder, and that's one of the few things that have not gone right for the University of Miami. He is marked out of bounds. This weekend, we hope you'll join us on NBC Sports, the AFC Divisional Playoffs. Saturday, it'll be Charlie Jones and Todd Christensen as the Denver Broncos hoist the Houston Oilers. Coverage begins NFL Live. Bob Costas, Will McDonough, Bill Parcells is still with us, and O.J. Simpson at 3.30 Eastern. And then Sunday, Bill and I will be up at Rich Stadium in Buffalo as the Bills, the defending AFC champions, host the Kansas City Chiefs. Nebraska on the short punt, 17 yards, starts at its 38-yard line. The toss to Derrick Brown. Caught from behind by Darren Smith and then drilled by Hurley Brown, number eight. But the key is Darren Smith, number 45, a 230-pound linebacker, runs a 4-4-2. Watch him. Just so quick. And then Hurley Brown, with his speed, comes inside out as a safety man, and bang, there he is. So it's that attacking defense, and at this point, Nebraska has got to do a better job blocking at the line of scrimmage so they at least can get something going up inside where those safeties can't take those angles. No gain, second Here's the and option. 10. McCann trips over his own man. Number 61, Eric Wiegert, was down, and McCann couldn't elude him. He's tough to uh, miss. He's 300 pounds. And that is the end of the first quarter here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. And the noise is for the Hurricanes. They lead impressively. The Miami Hurricanes 13, Nebraska nothing after the first quarter. And earlier here on NBC, you saw from... Tempe, Arizona, the Fiesta Bowl and the Nittany Lions of Joe Paterno impressively over the Tennessee Volunteers 42-17 and of course the big game for fans uh, following the battle for number one the two big unbeaten teams Washington has completed its season impressively 34-14 Rose Bowl win over Michigan 
And now the other unbeaten major team, Miami, with an early 13-0 lead. It's third down, 12, Nebraska, at its own 36 as we open the second. Keith and McCann throwing long for Bostic, but too long. And that'll bring up fourth down and a punt as we go to John Dockery. Keith McCann's pass is incomplete. You, you know, Dick, the guy you need most in a game like this for Nebraska, where is he? On the sidelines. That's Kenny Wilhite, probably their best man-to-man -man defender as a defensive back. He's out with a knee injury. So bad is the situation in the secondary for Nebraska that they brought Tyrone Hughes, number 33, over for offense. He was a receiver and made him a cornerback, and he's playing a lot tonight. That's how tough it is for Nebraska in their secondary against this Miami team. Back you're, to you, Dick. You're right, Doc. Will Hyde had six interceptions to lead Nebraska this year. Into that against Colorado. Beautiful kick by Stiggy as Kevin Williams retreats to the 18. Look at him get through Look that out. swarm of red and finally tackled at the 25-yard line by Lance Bullethead Gray, a sophomore Miami. from Owego, New York. You know, this uh, Miami offense, if, Lance Erickson, if Dennis Erickson came in with a different style of football, more of a Big Ten style, I'm not sure Miami would have near the success. I think it's an ideally suited offense for the kinds of athletes they can recruit here. How different is Dennis Erickson's pass offense than the ones that, say, Schnellenberger used with uh, Kozar and the Testaverde and Walsh teams of Jimmy Johnson? There is a difference because he likes to spread people out. He has fewer running backs behind the center. He has them there less often, I put it that way. Loretta with some pressure, and he gets it off. Coleman Bell, and Bell the tight end, uh, almost a safety valve, picks up nearly eight yards. Trev Alberts, number 34, a sophomore from Cedar Falls, Iowa, was the man nearly sacking Toretta. Now, this is why the pro scouts will like Toretta. He's strong. You see that strength? And see his presence, Dick. When he was on his way down, he was still thinking clearly, and he knew just where his receiver would be. He's had Dennis Erickson's offense now for three years. He knows it frontwards and backwards, but he has a, a certain poise that that's the characteristic of a guy that plays a number of years in the NFL. He's a junior, 6'3 and 205, changing his play. And he's graduated from college already. He's going to be in graduate school next semester. Larry Jones has the first down and is knocked out of bounds at the 41 of Miami by Ed Stewart, a freshman from Chicago. Yeah, Gino graduated just this uh, December. He's going to get an MBA starting in the next school year. So he's got a lot of things going from him. And what a great family from Pinole, California. That's uh, 10 miles uh, just north of Berkeley, east of Berkeley. And yeah, that just uh, north, right. Antler uh, Tavern and Family Restaurant run by his mother, Connie, where they had a big New Year's special. I know they're rooting for Toretta, Miami in Pinole, Tiny. From just across the Miami 40 on first down. Toretta. Look at that gun. Wow. Lamar Thomas, first down, Nebraska 48-yard line. Carmer made the tackle. Pass is complete to number 36, Lamar Thomas. Thomas led Miami in catches with 39 this year. Now you'll see Thomas come up and simply run a curl pattern, but his, his explosion and his speed will drive people off. He turns in. Now watch the ball carry to him. And that's first the thing that I Miami personally always look for in a quarterback. The ball carries to the receiver not beginning to lose velocity as it gets there. The receiver has to sort of bend down and lose his ability to run in catching the ball. Miami leads 13-0, early second quarter. First down at the Nebraska 48. The delay goes to Manucci. Jason Marucci is uh, tackled at the 49, no game. It was Pat Engelbert and John Perella teaming up for Nebraska. There's Engelbert. An outstanding student, he's already in graduate school, was one of those selected nationwide to earn a National Football Foundation scholarship, a very bright young man. He's a 3.59 civil engineering, that's amazing. First team academic All-America, 22 players, two kickers make that. I mean, he's really a part of the elite of college football, this young man. He's only 260 playing on the nose. is spread all over the field. Toretta, it's Kevin Williams. Oh, geez. and Stewart from behind, number 32, makes the tackle of first down. If there's a fun guy to watch on the Miami team in practice. It's Kevin Williams, number five. 
Now he'll release straight up the field and just break on a simple out. But there isn't any way that Nebraska can get anyone underneath to help sort of make the throw go over someone's head. It's just drilled out there. And uh, there's another Williams coming. Kevin said, my kid brother Michael, who was a sophomore in high school in Dallas, he said he's faster than I was at the same age. And Kevin at 428. And he squats 430 pounds. He's very strong, although only 5'9 in height. Here's Jones flying up the middle to the 20 yard line. Another Miami first down. Well, that time, Claude Jones did a great job of blocking with Harris the offensive line. And it's a fine job by Cristobal turning his guy out. So there's a hole right there, the simplest of running plays. All they do is split the two defensive linemen because those linemen are trying to get to the passer. Jones, who injured his knee and didn't play much as a senior in high school, so wasn't heavily recruited. Big first half, 60 yards already. First down, Toretta. Intercepted by Tyrone Leggett right on the goal line. This is going to be a testy call. Where will they mark it? Almost a safety for Miami. So even when, when Nebraska does something well, Leggett with the interception almost backed into the end zone and kneeled for a safety. They're going to mark it at the one foot line. Well, it appeared as though in the process of intercepting the ball, his body drew right back into the end zone. His foot hit the ground as he landed. So I can't believe they wouldn't get it on the 20 yard line. No, they're marking it at the one yard line. His foot hit on the goal line, right on the strike. There isn't a way. Look at his, as he comes down, there's the foot right there. So the Huskers start from the one yard line against this Miami defense that has not given up a first down in this game. And just squeaking out of the end zone is Derrick Brown. Did, did that help? Here's Leggett as we look at that interception again. You see, as that second foot hit, you'd have to say he's like any other receptor. He hits the goal line. It would have to be on the 20 yard line. But these are the breaks of the game. At least they got the ball back with no points scored. 11-20 remaining in the opening half. Keith and McCant in crowded conditions. And up the middle goes Lance Lewis. The 225-pound fullback gives a little room for Nebraska out near the four-yard line. Jesse Armstead and others on the tackle. Well, they have appropriate nicknames, uh, that core of linebackers for Miami, and they all fly to the ball and love to hit. And while their size uh, may not be impressive, certainly their speed more than compensates. The flash is Smith because he's the fastest. 4-4-2, Superman, Jesse Armstead, because he's flying all over. 4-4-7, Bam Bam Barrow, the hitter, 4-6-4. Those are speeds that you don't see a defensive back. The throw to Bostic off mark and Nebraska has to punt again. Still no first downs for the Huskers. Really a tough job uh, for Keith and McKent. He went to his left and had to throw the ball. And he knew, of course, he knew he was in his own end zone. So he had to throw it rather prematurely. And Bostic just hadn't turned yet. It was sort of ill-advised at that point. But what do you do? They have the simplest of passing games that can work effectively in the big eight on occasion, but against this team, they're just outgunned. Keep your eye on the man on the end of the line for Miami, number 31, Darrell Williams. He loves to block kicks. Stiggy backed into the end zone and gets a high boomer away. A terrific kick, Kevin Williams to the 49-yard line and good coverage by Nebraska. They stop him right there. Lance Gray, another special teams tackle with a timeout. The 1992 Federal Express Orange Bowl is brought to you by Dodge, a division of the Chrysler Corporation. By Edge Shaving Gel, for less irritation, you've got the edge. By Tylenol Cold, nobody cares for your cold like Tylenol Cold. And by Hertz, we never forget who made us number one. We're Hertz, we're America's wheels. Tom 
Osborne. He played at Hastings College, uh, was a quarterback, drafted by the 49ers, but they had uh, Y.A. Tittle and John Brody. John Brody. So they the uh, asked him about playing receiver, and he did. Then went to the Redskins for a couple of years, had a severe hamstring problem, had to step out of playing football. But He's for 19 years, Dick, and you know, Dick, the problem, say in the state of Nebraska, is that the entire state year-round is interested in Nebraska football. In California, Florida, there are other sports, but boy, do they get scrutinized there. 13-0, Miami goes to work from the Nebraska 49. And the quick toss to the quickest man, Kevin Williams, is good for about 11 yards. Just to follow up uh, on Tom Osborne, while he's had a sensational 19-year career with the University of Nebraska, he looked at us and he said, you know, you still, it's the last game people remember. And for the last four years, the Huskers have lost their bowl games, and he has not as yet done what Bob Devaney, who preceded him, now the athletic director of Nebraska, accomplished, and that's a national championship. He goes back to that two-point call, I think it was 1983. 83 eight, team, 84 right, bowl game 84 here. bowl where he kicked the extra point, he had it, and he went for the two. That's a tough call for a coach, but I sure wish he'd have gone for the extra point. Here comes Larry Jones. Nearly nine yards are just picking up uh, eight, nine, ten at will. Miami, Perella makes the tackle, and Jones having a big first half up over uh, 70 yards. Well, Claude Jones and Cristobal, Mario, the right tackle, are doing a great job. They're just taking their man uh, and just sustaining contact. And by the time Jones hits the line of scrimmage, he's going full bore, and he's breaking through people as he gets there. The simplest of plays. If you're just joining us, we're in the second period, 9:27 uh, left before halftime. Michigan has been defeated by unbeaten Washington, and here Miami leads 13 to nothing over Nebraska. On second and a yard, Toretta looking for Daryl Spencer. He's got him, but was he in bounds? No. Daryl Spencer, who is listed as a halfback or tailback but actually they run as a wingback he's going to be outside a lot now that was really close a lot closer than you'd think as that ball was caught he had his back foot in play but right. his front foot had already gone out of bounds now spencer averaging 14 yards a catch almost 10 yards a run so the the uh, versatility of some of these guys uh, occasionally running from scrimmage and then being a primary pass receiver it makes it a very unique offense Third and short. Jones fumbles, and it goes right to a fellow Hurricane, Daryl Spencer. Oh, my. So Spencer in the right spot to collect that on the first down at the 25. Well, you need the brakes to get an upset, and Nebraska is not getting the brakes because this ball is up for grabs long enough for somebody to make a play on it. It is gone. It's in the air, and it falls right to Spencer, right to it. Engelbert uh, made the tackle, and Curtis Cotton was the closest man to that loose football. But Spencer there first, and with a first down. Here's that reverse. Kevin Williams, and he's got the blocker again. And a good tackle made by Tyrone Bird up from a safety spot as a flag goes down. Well, that was a nice tackle by Bird. That was the form tackle you're looking for. There's a flag on the play. It's against Miami, the penalty. Well, he pulled two people, and we had a hole the last time they ran that play. So there must, must be something happening that the Miami blocker is hooking his man. It could have been Leon Searcy, the left Flipping, tackle. Flipping. Offense. Offense. 15 yard foul. Spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Repeat first down. Well, Leon Searcy, a fine offensive tackle. We can just take a look here. I think it had occurred right there. So uh, Cersei had released down the field and then from behind and made contact. He has 4-9 speed. He made the Football Writers All-America team. He placed uh, Mike Sullivan at left tackle. Sullivan now with a highly successful Dallas Cowboy. I talked to, to Toretta. He says Cersei is the quiet leader of the football team. Says very little, but he's the guy that sets the standard for the rest of the players. First down, 27. Toretta over the middle to Marucci, and he is inside the 30-yard line before 
Petko and Alberts can make the tackle. Marucci is a sophomore from Youngstown, Ohio. In fact, went to Boardman High School, the same high school that produced Bernie Kosar and sent him down to Miami. Well, I've met Jason uh, before, met his dad and his family visiting Youngstown uh, at the DeBartolo home. Uh, they were over to the DeBartolos and had a chance to meet them years ago. You told me I'd given him an autograph. But gee, this guy's growing up. How old am I by now? I can't figure it out. <laughs> the ink has already faded on the autograph. Toretta under pressure, and he throws it into an open space, but no flag. There goes a the flag. They're going to call him for grounding. Anderson was the only player near the ball, and there's the call. There is a flag for play. Referee Ron Winter. Well, Anderson got there. There really wasn't a man assigned to block him. He split the defense. And Toretto, using his instincts, did the, the right thing, getting rid of the ball. Now, there's a totally unblocked. You see, that was a stunt all the way around the outside by Mike Anderson. But you, Intentional grounding. Offense. But you want to say one thing Five about Nebraska, Nick. They down. haven't lost their poise. Loss of down. Third down. Third down. Penley carries a loss of down. Nebraska has not lost their poise. Well, they, have, they are executing as they know how and are beginning to get some balance in how they're playing the game. Well, the contrast of recruiting area, there are one and a half million people approximately in the state of Nebraska, well over that, almost twice that much in the major Miami area. And many of the Nebraska athletes played six and eight man high school football. There are still 25 high schools in Nebraska playing six man football, and I think 100 that play eight man, including Maxwell High School near North Platte, had a great season this last year. I've met some of their players. Terrific guys. But this is where Nebraska's drawing its athletes. Third and 33 and a long throw. And uh, Lamar Thomas and Tyrone Leggett in a wrestling match down the sideline. A flag is down against whom? Intended for number 36, Lamar Thomas. Well, you're going to get these one-on-ones well down the field. As we spoke earlier, you, the Miami offense sort of circumvents everybody. It's against but Thomas. So, so Thomas wanted to make the play. Both guys go up after it, and you will get a good look. Leggett with good position. <laughs> Thomas says, hey, little peekaboo here. Oh, gee. Oh, gee. That, now, that's what we don't like to see in, in Miami football. And that's, that's an offense. Offense. 15-yard penalty, previous spot. Loss of down. Fourth down. One of the problems that Dennis Erickson inherited and is dealing with is sort of a, a reckless way of playing the, the game aside from the rules. You remember that Cotton Bowl game of a year ago? 16 infractions. Over 200 yards penalties, and that's, that initiated the new taunting rule in the NCAA called the Miami rule. Snyder hits a floater. Corey Dixon for Nebraska. And even with his speed, no chance. Smothered by the special teams of the Canes. Timeout, 6.57 left in the half. Unbeaten Miami leading once beaten and once tied Nebraska. Their only loss at home to Washington. Washington beat them 36-21 and compiled over 600 yards. And Washington has defeated Michigan impressively in the Rose Bowl earlier today. Nebraska shut out from that first down column. Starts from the 20. Calvin Jones, the freshman, a new tailback, eye back in the Nebraska system. And he is crushed after a yard game by Darren Smith. Smith came off the block so fast. That's quickness. Now, if you can run a 4 4 5 40, you also are pretty darn quick in a small area. And that time he was blocked and just popped right off the block and made the stop. Now, Darren Smith and Jesse. Armstead are the kind of people the NFL are looking for for that strong safety or nickel linebacker position. Yeah, Smith says he can uh, carry 235 with that speed. McKeithen, Keithen uh, hits his tight end, Johnny Mitchell, number 86, who led the Huskers in catches this year with 31. And he's out close to a first down. And this would be uh, almost something to celebrate if you're a Nebraska fan. He's out of bounds shy of the 30. So it'll be third down and about two. Now Mitchell, Mitchell I, I wrote before the game just taking 
you know, sort of preparing for it. Third and Mitchell would have to Nebraska. catch six to ten passes in this game for Nebraska to stay in it. Well, that's his first reception. But this is their best all-around athlete. And he averages almost 18 yards a catch coming into the ninth game. So he's going to have to be a factor at some point. Third and short, the fullback, Lance Lewis, has the first Got down. It. What a relief. A first down. With six Lance minutes Lewis and 11 carrier. seconds left in the half, Nebraska finally a first Back down. Trailing 13 to nothing. But if you were with us from the start, 13 nothing doesn't sound all that bad. It appeared Miami just might run them right out of the Orange Bowl in that first quarter and did not. Well, they have to find a play or a series of their offense that begins to work where they can work one play then off of another play and develop it. At this point, they haven't gotten anything established. And it's hard to believe the number one rushing team in college football can't do that. Calvin Jones, he's from Omaha, went to the same high school as the great Gale Sayers. Calvin Jones, the ball carrier. Said, I picked number 44 because it makes me look bigger. <laughs> Said those double fours. He's 5'11 and big For enough, 56, 205 Michael pounds. Carroll, went to Central High School in Omaha, where he also was the state 100 and 200 meter five. champion. And as Tom Osborne said, what he likes about him is he He's really fast, and after he gets to full speed, that's when he really can burn the opposition. Well, he had a, a terrible knee accident or injury in high school, and really Nebraska's the only team that stayed with him. A lot of teams stopped recruiting him. Jones again running over his own blockers to the 40-yard line. Now, It'll be third down here. and three. So, so, so Jones has had to overcome uh, major, major surgery to do what he's doing. Now here's, if you take a look at this, You've got to think you've got a potent football team. Now, these two men are, are, are 2,000 yards between them, averaging seven yards yeah, approximately two. between them. Three. And, uh, and maybe at some point now they can generate generate these guys a chance to run and, and to, to stride out as they run, rather than they have to stop and begin to dodge people as they get to the line of scrimmage. Here's the option, pass. And Mitchell is open downfield, oh. he's got it. Beautiful. First down at the Miami 28-yard line. Well, we talked about Mitchell, Dick, and he showed us what he could do. He really stretched out for that ball. So they set up the pass with two option plays that didn't work. Now they fake it and up over the top to Mitchell. Look at that catch. Beautiful job. Beautiful job. 32 yards for the 260-pound sophomore from Chicago. So for the first time, Nebraska, a first down in Miami territory at the 28-yard line. And that brings some of this Orange Bowl crowd to its feet. McCant throws it away as Calvin Jones kind of ran into the flat and stopped, and McCant wanted him to continue to circle. He would have been open along the sideline. Well, I think he wanted Bostick, number 18, to run a post-corner route and it was just simply covered by uh, Miami. It was just totally taken away. So they really worked a one-man pattern that Miami covered, and all Keith and McCant could do was get rid of the ball. McCant, who's idle, growing up in the Dallas area. Roger Staubach, the way he could rally the Cowboys, he said, I hope if it's uh, called for, I can do it tonight. He'll have his chance. Calvin Jones on a delay. And shows some power there as he drives to the 22-yard line. Charles Farms and Daryl Williams, two safeties to make the tackle. As you pointed out, not a great start because of the previous knee surgery, but a lot of speed once it gets on track. They haven't lost their poise, that's evident. And even though they were taking a bad beating, and it was almost a, a TKO in the first round, they're back in the ball game. And McCant will call timeout. That's the second used by Nebraska in this first half. Calvin Jones having trouble with his equipment. 3.22 remaining in the half. Number one Miami leading 13-0 with 3.22 left in the half. Nebraska its only threat of the half. A reminder as we approach the intermission that uh, the collegiate guru, Bino Cook, will be 
with Gail Gardner in New York. We'll have the scores and highlights and his dissertation on who will be number one. Third down, a long three. Jones, just too fast on defense. Michael Barrow and Darren Smith, the linebackers. It appeared Jones had some running room at four. Oh, just like that, the door slammed. They just attack the play, and they get there before Nebraska's uh, accustomed to dealing with defenders. Tom Osborne now with a choice on fourth down. Does he go for the field goal or try for the first down, fourth and three? No gain on that last play. He's going to go for it. Well, the option play has always been the bread and butter, but it's been stuffed every time they've run it. <laughs> but they're in the formation they're where you typically call the option. Well, they ran out of time, and there's the delay a game penalty. Five yards more for Nebraska. Osborne tried to get the attention, but the noise was so high. You see, they're trying to call time. See, he knew they wouldn't have time to get the playoff, but with a crowd noise, especially down at that closed end of the Orange Bowl, no one for the Huskers on the field heard the cry from his coach. You know, both uh, both head coaches call the offensive plays. Tom Osborne has, since taking over at Nebraska, called virtually every offensive play. So he has the added, the added pressure on him to make the decisions and run the ball club. He does a fine job of it. And you look at his win-loss record, the best in college football. Byron Bennett, the field goal kicker, with Stiggy holding. This will be a 43-yard attempt, his longest 47 this year. Plenty of leg, but wide to the left, no good. So Nebraska's best chance to get on the board goes by. Miami's still in front, 13-0. The nature of the Miami defense reflected in that graphic. Only three opponents scoring touchdowns in the first half, and Nebraska shut out thus far tonight with two and a half minutes left before the intermission. 13 0 Hurricanes, and Toretta goes to work. To the sidelines, and Thomas, and he juggles and drops. Well, that time the Nebraska pass rush did not have the intensity it's going to have to have. Thomas. It just appeared in that particular case that some of the guys may just feel they're not going to get there anyway. They're really going to have to try to keep the pressure on. It's that simple. Second and 10 from the Miami 26. They All just have to keep coming. Uh, they can't let down now. They're still in the ball game. Three receivers to the right. Larry Jones, the only running back. And it's Jones with a call off tackle. Speed. Breaking tackle. And appears to have the first down out at about the 37, 38 yard line. Tyrone Leggett and Ed Stewart in on the stop. Now this is just an attack, that same single single play. They call it number Tackle play 34. Number That's Ed easy Stewart. enough. You see the downfield blocking by Travis Kevin Williams. And then it's good momentum build up straight Eight down the field. Yards. And Larry Jones is starting to break tackles. Second because Check he has more speed build up when he hits the tackler than Line they have when they want to tackle him. It's just the inertia of the, of the run. Same formation with trips to the left. Toretta under some pressure and it's through the hands of Horace Copeland who was open. Trev Alberts hit Toretta as he threw the ball and it still was right on line. It appeared there was a defender moving between the receiver. You see the defender moving between the receiver and the quarterback right at the last instant. That was uh, Ed Stewart right there in the way. Now, Tretta can take a shot. He can take a shot. Albert's a uh, little frustrated there. I'm sure the referee told him next time around uh, he's not going to let that happen. Albert's led the Huskers in sacks this year with seven. Second and ten. This screen. And Jones couldn't get there. Well covered. Perella was in the mix, and Engelbert was pressuring the thrower. Perella read the screen very nicely. When he saw Barber go to the outside, he just turned and ran out right out there with him. 
He's six five and two ninety and runs uh, forty under five flat. And they like him because he's not only tough but uh, mean. And I guess those are two different uh, characteristics. I think you're mean. <laughs> I'm mean. <laughs> yeah, I'd just like to be tough. Maybe this will be the year to be mean. What do you think, Mr. Vanilla? At the 37-yard line, third and ten. 154 left in the half. Uh, we had a movement on the left side. I think it was Cristobal was playing on the left side and pulled out of there in pass protection. Now they're just a little self-destruct going on here with Miami and that's uh, keeping Nebraska alive. Yeah, it was almost uh, too easy for Dennis Erickson's team to start the game. Dead ball. False start. Offense. Well, if they third can get down. out of here, if Nebraska Dick gets out of here 13 zip, I mean, it's a it semi from the successful Miami. half. Tyrone Hughes, who has never played defensive back, a wide receiver, but that fractured hand makes it difficult to catch the ball. And so two weeks ago, he said, let me play defense. And they say he's really accommodated well. He has the speed to cover. But against this Miami uh, offense, Look that's out. really yeah. throwing him in the boiler. Toretta. Gets to the sidelines, but no first down. Out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Travis carrier. Hill, 93, right, got to him. So the Travis punting team Hill. comes on. Let's uh, check cues on that last play. How'd he do? Uh, he did fine. He didn't have any move to worry about, so he just turned, kept his position, then turned and just ran. So Eight, not bad. Yard. Now, you wouldn't want to have him stake Fourth your future on that kind of a play, but he's got big heart. He said he wasn't going to play Paul much Snyder, receiver, yeah. so... Coach, let me have a shot. We need extra speed in that secondary this week. Californian Paul Snyder. It's a good punt. Corey Dixon calls for the fair catch at the 20-yard line. 138 Corey left Dixon. in the first it's half, and we have a timeout. At the track of 20. us at the intermission. We'll have some of that flavor as well as going back to New York. Bino Cook, Paul McGuire, Gail Gardner discussing who will be number one as well as all the highlights of a busy bowl day. 13-0 here with 1.38 left. Keith and McCamp setting up at the 20. And Calvin Jones, the freshman, tripped up at the 22. Eric Miller from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, made the tackle. And in the Sugar Bowl, that uh, score brought a roar from the crowd as a Florida to the north cheered for their 13-0 lead against Notre Dame. Second and eight. Well, these the three universities in the state of Florida, there are a number of other good, good football schools, but the three major universities are feeling the, the best teams uh, in college football at this point. As we pointed out, a lot of it's the high school programs uh, throughout the state. Take to Jones, the throw Look to the out. tight end. And that's William Washington, number 89, who caught only one pass all pass year. Number 89, but it's Washington. not good enough for the first down, as Nebraska, I believe, has used its Tackle last time out. Well, for Nebraska's sake, it would be good to get the first down here and not have to punt the ball. It was Miami that called a time, yeah. perhaps feeling that if they can stop them here, that the Hurricanes will get a one final chance to score. It rained very hard through the course of the day until, oh, about an hour before the kickoff. And earlier today, the uh, Orange Bowl committee decided for the first time in history to cancel the halftime show. A lot of electrical involvement and in the back uh, from the future theme. So we'll have the bands for you at halftime. This Orange Bowl, it was first played in 1935 when Bucknell beat Miami 26 to nothing. And then the Orange Bowl structure itself, it was played on this site, constructed in 1930, late 37s, and the first game in the bowl in 38, when Auburn defeated Michigan State, 22,000 a sellout. Now it's up over 75,000. Well, I wonder if Bucknell had the secret for stopping this Miami. <laughs> they had it then. They were passing then, I bet. Third and two, Miami trying to stop Nebraska and get one final shot to build on their 13-0 lead. Now this is the option formation. Nate Turner, the wing back in motion, and the give is to the fullback, Lance Lewis, 
who is close to the first down. Lance Lewis, the one of the carrier. problems so far, the offensive line for Nebraska is not able to sustain their blocks. The quickness of Michael the Miami Barrett, defenders are Smith. getting and off those blocks before much can happen. It is a first down for Tom Osborne's team. And now they wind up the clock. Nebraska from their own 31. Well, maybe they'll take a shot downfield. There it is. Hit from the backside, and it's Rusty Medeiros with a sack for Miami. He Just a sophomore from Ozark, Missouri. He can right really right move. He's Rusty got a Medeiros. knack like Kevin Fagan of getting under the, under the blocker's shoulder and cutting the angle down. He's 6'3 and 252. Uh, grew Second up on a, a farm, a stock Minnesota. cattle farm in the Ozarks from... The Ozarks, a small town, 2,400 to Miami, Florida. Deep downfield oh, and overthrowing John Bostic was Keithan McCant. Three seconds left in the half. There might have been a chance there. The ball was simply overthrown. Bostic was open. Now the mouthing stuff, you just hate to see it start. No need for it. So one final play for Nebraska. If you're just joining us, 13-0 Miami. While Nebraska could not do a thing against the Hurricane defense the first quarter, Miami scored the first three possessions, a touchdown and two field goals, but since four possessions without any points. And again, no chance for McCann. Rusty Medeiros, his third sack of the first half. They had 44 sacks last year, 44 this year, thanks to this young Medeiros. Let's go down to John Dockery. Coach, um, you don't look real happy. You're ahead 13 nothing. Well, I mean, uh, you know, we got so many penalties, John. It should be it should be worse than that. We're playing great on defense, and offensively, we just uh, threw away too many opportunities. We're going to have to we can come out and play good on offense second half, and we'll be fine. Okay, Coach. Dennis Erickson, who wants more than a 13 nothing lead, like all coaches, no lead uh, big enough. He uh, played his football at Montana State as a quarterback. And speaking of quarterbacks, Keithan McCant limping off the field after that last play. It's as though he twisted his ankle. It, I don't believe with that gate it would be a knee. So he's just caught with Medeiros right down his throat again. It's and almost untouched. It's like his ankle was caught up underneath him. So at the intermission of this 58th Orange Bowl Festival, it's the Miami Hurricanes 13, Nebraska nothing. Now to New York and Gail Gardner. Okay, welcome back, Gail Gardner, along with Paul McGuire. Of course, we are seeing Miami winning 13 to nothing. We saw Washington annihilate Michigan today. Now, we're watching this game, and we're seeing the Canes do a little bit of something they said that they were not trying to do this season, and that's be bad boys. And they've been doing some taunting out on the field. Well, take a look at the, at the play here, Gail, and you're looking at Lamar Thomas, and, and, and this stuff is, this is uncalled for. The reason I'm saying this is that the ball is in play now. Clock stops on a first down, but the ball is in play. He didn't get out of bounds. If I were the official in this game, throw the flag now. The first time this happens, this is uncalled for. These guys are out there to play a football game, and they're not out there to embarrass the people in Nebraska or any other team. And, and I blame this on the head coach, Dennis Erickson. I mean, he should stop this now. Do you think this is going to hurt them in the polls? No, not at all, because they're just too good a football team. Okay. All right. They were underexposed on television, didn't get their due in the preseason polls, and didn't get as much respect as they felt they deserved. But right now, the Washington Huskies appear on the verge of at least a share of the national championship. In the Rose Bowl, Washington dominating the second half, going on to crush Michigan 34 to 14. Heisman Trophy winner Desmond Howard uh, held in check throughout, caught only one pass, and here he stopped on a kickoff return. First play of the second quarter, Billy Joe Hobart fakes the handoff, takes it himself, and two yards out, seven nothing Huskies. And then they break it open in the third quarter. Hobart, with lots of time, finds freshman tight end Mark Bruner, who manages to stay in bounds. That five-yard touchdown pass 
Two-point conversion, 21-7, early first quarter. Quarterback Mark Brunel in relief of Hobart. He connects with Mario Bailey. That's a 38-yard touchdown pass. Washington wins 34-14. Defensive standout Steve Entman. Is he excited or what? So who is number one? Well, I think uh, if you've watched us all season, watched us today, we're 12-0. I think we have a little bit of claim to number one. I'd say uh, we deserve opportunity to, uh, for a national championship. We went 12-0. We did all we could do. And, uh, and good luck to Miami, but uh, I hope we get our share of it. As far as the national title, uh, you got to look at our defense. You got to look at our offense. You got to look at our balance. You got to look at our depth. Miami doesn't have very much of those. All right, Paul and I will be back a little later at halftime, and we'll talk with Washington coach Don James on why the Huskies should be number one. We will also raise the question of who's number one with one of college football's leading experts and good friend, Bino Cook, who joins us live from Pittsburgh. Up next, though, it's the Huskers marching band right after this message from the University of Nebraska. Tom Osborne, uh, coach, right before the half, it appeared your quarterback, McCant, might have been injured. Is he okay? I think he's all right. I think he just got a little bit of a sprained ankle or something. He's fine. And, uh, you know, Miami's very quick. They're playing well. I think we've got a little bit of momentum going in the second quarter. And uh, we hope we can come back and have a strong second half. Did you do anything differently in that second quarter because you seem to take the momentum away from them? No, I think we just got a little better rhythm. This is a different surface. We don't play on this much. It's pretty wet. I think our defensive backs have adjusted a little bit, and I think our offense is getting a little bit better. So we hope we can play well this second half. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Out there. Dick, back to you. All right, Doc. Uh, the only other time that uh, Nebraska played on grass this year was at the University of Arizona. They defeated the Wildcats. Before we go to the first half highlights, just a postscript on the battle for number one. We talked with Dennis Erickson, asked him, and he echoed almost to the word what Don James said. There's nothing wrong with having two teams voted the number one uh, position in the country. He said, I'd be very happy to share that honor with Washington. And he, too, is not in favor of postseason playoffs. Well, both coaches feel it's just too much football, Dick, to be a legitimate student attending classes working toward graduation and playing maybe more than 11 or 12 games it's just not right and uh, I feel exact same way with 150 schools competing for a national championship and let's just say each year there are about 40 that are legitimately in the running for it you just can't have a format the NFL only has 28 teams and they work their format down pretty fine-tuned but this way you have to subjectively decide and to me both clubs are deserving of it. Well, I, I haven't heard any complaints about from Georgia Tech or Colorado that they shared last year's the original shock maybe of a week, but they both are pleased they were number one, and maybe that's the way it's headed again this year. Well, let's go back to the first half, and it looked as if Miami was going to just blow Nebraska out of the Orange Bowl. Here's the play that set up the first touchdown. Well, Kevin Williams just simply sprints down the field with great speed, but Curtis Cotton technique broke down on him he slipped and fell and it was an easily easy play fortunately in a sense it wasn't a touchdown the ball was thrown outside now the touchdown itself poor mike anderson number 48 a good linebacker good agility but he's dealing with kevin williams and there really isn't a chance that he can make that coverage now nebraska in turn uh, unable to get a first down until there was six minutes remaining uh, in the first half and uh, did hit the one long pass from McCann to Mitchell. But uh, if you're a Husker fan, where do you find hope in the second half? I just, you hope that uh, Miami continues to semi self destruct, which they did throughout the later stages of the second quarter. You hope you can come up with some Ladies kind of a single play that can get you on the scoreboard the and then just get the brakes. They're out gun back. It's that simple. All right, down to the field and John Dockery. You know, you know, Dick, um, the word out of the locker room at halftime with Dennis Erickson talking to his team, you saw him going in. He was a little bit agitated. He wasn't a happy man, even though he's leading this game and seems to have it in control. He felt they lost some momentum. So at halftime, he talked to his team in a very strong way. It was controlled, but there was a lot of passion underneath. And he was simply telling them, hey, we started this way back in August. We've come this far. Now we only have one half left to play now go out there up the intensity and don't self-destruct the way they did and it was penalties that killed the offense and and really took away the momentum so Erickson was very strong he knows they have a half left for at least a share of the national championship Dick all right Doc 
Erickson's Miami half. team certainly owned all the, the statistics. 267 and total yards, to only 62 for Nebraska in the pass yardage. Most of that coming on the one throw to Mitchell. It's 13 nothing. The penalty yardage uh, not revealed in that uh, graphic, but in the uh, first half there were 98 yards and penalties assessed against Miami only 10 for Nebraska and the 98 yards certainly uh, the most significant defense against Miami having a bigger lead well just a simple problem this grass this field is somewhat slow I've seen a lot slower uh, and that's one explanation that, that Osborne can't have uh, the Williams. crowd noise is a factor uh, you're playing at uh, obviously, uh, the Orange Bowl, Miami's home stadium, a lot of things working against you. But at this point, uh, Nebraska just doesn't have anything put together offensively to stay in the game. All right, the current teams get the ball first, and Kevin Williams showing his leg power, breaks a tackle, and is finally dragged down by number 43, Shane Geichen. And the Canes offense comes on the field. Gino Toretta in the first the half. Through 26 Shane times, he's on, on course for a record, Orange Bowl record for most attempts. He completed 12 with one interception and one touchdown and was sacked one time. A I'm worried about Nebraska's first defensive from from pass rush control. group. They tended to fatigue in that soft surface in the second quarter. And if they slow down or lose their intensity, Toretta's going to have a field day. Anderson, the linebacker, right up on the line of scrimmage, and then backs off as Larry Jones gets the first carry and slams Larry out to Jones the 38-yard line. Anderson and Perella, the tacklers. Again, Perella feeling he's got to rush the passer and trying to stay outside of Searcy, just opened a natural hole that he, he had to come back and fill. But they are stretching that front. A little bit of the run-and-shoot kind of football here, Dick. Uh, the formations aren't quite Second the same, but the, the same kind of philosophy. I think Erickson has it, has the answer uh, offensively. Jones again, he has 86 yards rushing in the game, now over 90 as he has a first down at the 45-yard line. Larry Jones, the ball carrier. Anderson, the tackler. Of bounds by number Beautiful 99, job Mike of Pecco. pulling by Searcy that time around the corner. He really showed good agility and speed coming around Seven the outside. Yards on the game. Rain uh -oh. beginning to fall again, a light rain. It's uh, into the lights. It seems Miami. like it's heavier than actually falling. They had hoped that uh, the rain and the front had passed through, but apparently not. 14-0 Miami as we open this second half. On first down, Toretta, good play action. Fake and almost intercepted oh. by Tyrone Bird. Uh, Bird read that. that. Now that play's being just uh, worn out by professional and college teams in which you're going to fake to the right, then bootleg back and get a crossing receiver. People see it coming and intersect the pass and the receiver. So that play may have sort of run its course in both college and professional football, but it has been very, very effective. Tyrone Bird, a junior from Chandler, Arizona, almost picking off his second interception of this year. He's made 71 tackles going into this game, and he's going to have to make a few more, I'm afraid. Good throw by Toretta, the wide open Kevin Williams. You have to treat him with so much respect, and he still dances inside the Nebraska 40 away from Tyrone Leggett. You need more people over there. Leggett's all by himself, and there's a lot of running room. So you'll see Leggett really in pretty good position, settling down, but now all this movement. See, no one's arrived yet to help out, so all he can do is sort of corral his man. Williams' fifth Game catch of the night yards. to lead all receivers. 17 yards gives him 89-90 now on the night. Boy, every time he gets that ball, when you average over 10 yards of rush and 16 yards of pass completion, you are dynamite. Same, same play to Darrell Spencer, and Spencer has another first down, working on Leggett. Make that Lamar Thomas, rather. Lamar Thomas has the, the reception. pass is complete to number 36, Lamar Thomas. Well, they're simply pushing three, people downfield, the and then one of them will stop short. So while the defenders are chasing receivers downfield, one man pulls up short, catches the ball. There's one defender, and he makes his little play. First down so, for Miami. But believe me, it takes a guy that's accurate Nebraska throwing 26. the ball. 
And it's too bad that that Nebraska pass rush front doesn't recognize this three-step drop, as we call it, by the quarterback and jump and try to get in the way of the throw itself. Just a junior, Dredd, and all his receivers, significant receivers, are all back as well. Same play. Just, uh, Tyrone Hughes. Can't corral Williams, and Williams another first down inside the 15. Simply playing catch. It's that, that, uh, that kind of a thing. Well, what do you do, Bill? Uh, what kind of defense would well, help? Are you help out there than someone else's? It doesn't appear that Tom Osborne's defense was prepared to stop the three-step drop by a quarterback and try to jump and block the pass or be a factor at the line of scrimmage because they're not doing that. Fredo's just dropping back and throwing the ball without First anyone between them. I think we... Uh, I think we can see the same thing until somebody raises their hands and tries to block that ball back toward the quarterback. Little misdirection, and it's Jones up the middle. And the freshman is to the six-yard line, a gain of eight more before Mike Anderson can make the stop. Well, as a former uh, professional football coach, I'm looking at Leon Searcy, who played right tackle on that play and pulled like... A guy McIntyre of the 49ers, beautiful movement by that tackle. And this guy is 6'3", 290 pounds. Will he be a great pro? Got what activity. Good base, too, those oh, 17 gee. Triple E shoes of his. <laughs> oh, that's right. He can operate on. And he's the quiet leader of the ball club. Second and two. Jones to the goal line. Touch. Nope. They started up and then pulled down the hands at the one foot line. Barry Jones, the ball carrier. Jones over the 100 yard the mark. One. Now, this we really Tackle didn't expect this much rushing. Kevin but Rimmigers. Jones is picking his holes beautiful. It's just man on man blocking. And what an effort. To first the goal line and just denied Miami. was Jones. So, four shots for Miami to score in their first possession of the second half. The simplest of plays is just the talent and the timing. Jones has scored three touchdowns in the regular season, and he figures to get the shot. Oh, a fumble by Toretta. Did he fall on it? Taking the snap from center, it appeared that he uh, is under the quarterback. Well, believe it or not, at this point in time, the uniform can get wet. The jersey, the hands can be wet of the center so and the quarterback, and these and kind of things can start happening. Even though the rain has passed through, things are still wet. In fact, there is just still a, a slight drizzle, but the hands wet, the uniform wet, and these kind of miscues begin to, begin to crop up. Second and goal, loss of about a yard. Second and goal. Jones, he's earned it. He's got it. Touchdown, Miami. The touchdown to number 23, Larry Jones. They called him horse in high school, and they rode him on that drive. And it's the same thing we've been seeing all day. And you got a nice job of Barber pulling that time, number 60, and really leading the play up the field. Very, very well done. 66 yards in 10 plays, and see if they're going to go for two here, leading 19 to nothing. They are. Triple right with Daryl Spencer on the left side. Throw incomplete, so they put pressure on Toretta, Ed Stewart up the middle, and Dennis Erickson's team denied the two-point conversion with 11-19 remaining in the third period. Miami hikes its lead to 19-0. The 1992 Federal Express Orange Bowl is brought to you by Federal Express. All around the world, our most important package is yours. By the new Mazda. Mazda, it just feels right. By Pepsi. And by Kentucky Fried Chicken. Nobody's cooking like today's KFC. Miami scoring on its first possession of the game and of the second half. Remember, they deferred on the toss of the coin after winning the toss at the start of the game. 
19 nothing as they fail on the two point try Tyrone Hughes and Nate Turner are deep as Carlos Huerta ready to kick it off for Miami and Keith and McCann apparently okay and he's strapping on that uh, helmet and ready to go to work for Nebraska it's so tough to be the quarterback and not have anything you can go to that you can count on it's for a long long football Huerta knuckleball and Turner lets it go into the end zone and touches it down for the touchback. So our football focus to the Turner NFL this the weekend NFL on Saturday touchback. at 3.30. It's Houston at Denver. And the AFC Nebraska, Divisional Playoffs will be play. kicked off by Costas McDonough, Parcel Simpson and company on NFL Live. And then on Sunday, Kansas City at Buffalo. Remember the Chiefs, perhaps their top game of the year when they uh, devoured the Bills at Arrowhead at midseason. Well, Buffalo gets a chance for revenge. Bill and I will be there. 12.30 kickoff, 12 noon for NFL Live. And Nebraska's first play up the middle, much like those we saw in the first half, just Number a couple of yards. Just Smith, Barrow, Armstead, the Attack three linebackers, the flash, Michael Bam Barrow. Bam, and Superman all in on the stuff. Yeah, again, it's that quickness. You know, the state of Nebraska does a fantastic job at being mobilized and producing Second football players. Virtually every school plays football. Uh, there are schools with as few as 15 or 16 students that play six-man football. Everybody plays, but they're not all necessarily great athletes. And I think uh, Osborne's done has developed these men through nutrition and weight training, but they may not have the quickness it takes to play a team like Miami. McCamp. Almost intercepted by Barrow, the linebacker, who was right there, the step for step with Abdul Muhammad. Muhammad, the Muhammad. freshman from the Los Angeles area and one of the fastest Michael receivers Barrow for Nebraska. Well, Muhammad could have come a little closer, tighter to the line, and gotten there quicker. And I, I also think McCant could have run with the ball. But the Nebraska players are well conditioned. They sure know what they're doing. They're disciplined. They're courageous. They're tough. But they just don't present, uh, present the quickness on the field that this opposition does and it shows up in the running game as well as the passing game. Third and a tough eight. The camp to Mitchell the tight end and indeed he is their top receiver out to the 40 yard line in a first down before Charles Farms can stop him. Now Mitchell will simply go in motion turn up the field and then run across. You'll see the ball snap in just a shallow cross pattern and with the blitz the coverage by Farms wasn't quick enough, wasn't there when it should have been. Uh, Mitchell is just active enough. If he could, would catch eight to ten passes in this game, you can see uh, Nebraska making it closer because he's the one weapon that's been effective at this point. Turner in motion. The option. McCann. He's met after about a four-yard pickup by Farms, the senior from Houston who came up from Keith safety to make the tackle. Carry. So typically, tackle weak two, safeties Charles don't Farms. get there that quick. But Farms gets there quick because he's so so very fast, 5'11", 195. He just takes an angle and beats McCants to the point where McCants has to make a decision. Second and six from the Nebraska 43. Well, that Syracuse team impressive, a very young club that uh, is... Well, that Penn State, right uh, Penn State did uh, play... Miami's very, very well, and now you can understand how good Penn State actually is. On second down and six. Down he goes again. Medeiros has another sack. Boy, is he quick around that corner. Well, he reminds me an awful lot of Kevin Fagan now. Kevin, of course, played at Miami a few years ago, and he now plays for the 49ers. But look at the quickness around the corner. That's just speed and quickness, and he takes a beautiful Lost angle. Eight. And Lundberg is probably taking him on a little early, Dick. He should give a little bit more ground because this guy's simply quicker than he is. Third and I asked Medeiros, what do you do in Ozark, five. Missouri, on Saturday night? He said, well, if you're not hauling hay, you cruise the square. And he said he wants to be a professional player, and that's why he selected Miami. I can't have some time. Oh, gee. And now, I really think that uh, Keevan uh, McCant should be willing to run in those 86. situations. He's had Johnny two or three Mitchell. opportunities to run with a ball. And one thing that uh, Osborne had mentioned to us, his quarterback can run if necessary, and we're not getting that tonight. And the 
can't rush for over 650 yards during the regular season. Most of that off the option attack, but uh, the scramble is one thing that can it could. Put, put now some he's limping a little, but still, he needs to make a play in a pass situation where he will break out of that pocket and run and get a first down or two. He needs to do that. Digging, who hunted well in the first half. His sixth kick. And Williams going to let it bounce. And then a gamble. Oh, he is so quick. And out to the 36-yard line. Miami has the ball again. 40 yards on the punt. 11-yard return. And a timeout. Rain continues to fall in Miami as the Hurricanes break huddle. 37 yard line leading 19 to nothing. Eight and a half minutes left in the third as Gino Toretta guides this uh, high powered Kane offense and gives to the fullback Larry Jones to the 45 of Nebraska. 18 more for Jones. Mike Anderson, number 48, got caught inside on this play, and it really opened up a hole. Now you see Anderson get caught right inside there, and it was really very well blocked. First and ten. I think it was Daryl Spencer who, who did the job of blocking the sport. It did open up. 125 yards now for the freshman. Again, most all of the skilled players for Miami are back next year. They lose only a couple of backups to graduation. To red on first down. Good protection underneath to Kevin Williams. Slipping and sliding and finally caught at the 35. A gain of 10 more. John Dockery. Connie Toretta, is it true that you critique all of your son's performances? That I what? Critique. Absolutely. Absolutely. What would you say about him today? I want to tell you the first quarter was excellent. Yes? The second quarter, we had only one mistake. What was that? Now, my son we're talking about, right? What's that? Yes. Well, he threw an interception. If he hadn't done that, everything would have been perfect. He was just dropping back well. He had he stayed in the pocket well. If he scrambled out, he was deceptively fast. Did you notice that? I tell you what, you are a mother who knows something about the game of football. Is that true? Uh, sometimes. I, I think uh, you might be able to set up in the box with uh, Coach Walsh sometimes. All right, everything's going well here. Okay, back to you, Dad Dick. Handsome Jeff, who played uh, back up to. Vinny Testaverde and uh, his twin, Gary Toretto, was also a quarterback, played at St. Mary's out of Baraka, California. And Greg, the other brother, played uh, wide receiver for Cal Davis. They all played football. This is the backup, Marucci, and a flag goes down. You know, uh, their dad, Al, uh, passed away in 1988 after, just before a game, uh, and it really affected the family. But the dad, apparently, Dick, wasn't necessarily a, a sportsman from the standpoint of a participant, but he filmed every game that all four of those sons played, and they'd have to go home and watch it. And that really created that sort of sportsman atmosphere in the family. And uh, Gino says that was as important as anything to him. Holding. Holding. Offense. 10-yard foul from the spot of the foul. Repeat third down. Third down. And Gino, uh, as the penalty holding against Miami, he said that uh, I was the rebel he said, only because I was the youngest and everyone loved the 49ers, that dad had season tickets uh, back, going back to when they played at Pizar Stadium. So he said, I just took the Raiders. I really liked the 49ers, but I always said I was a Raider fan just to be different. He's never been hurt in football. He broke both arms in two different accidents skateboarding. He was one of those ramp skateboarders doing the flipping and all that. Broke both arms. He said that football's been easy. Well, he really is built. Oh, they're so similar in appearance, all four brothers. Bright guys, sharp guys. Third down 11. They had him and he got away, and there's the open man. Oh, through the arms of Daryl Spencer. And the wet ball might have been a factor there. Fourth drop against Toretta. Gino uh, does move nicely to his left, and he has good body control getting this thing off going to his left. And just that hand in the face sometimes can knock off the uh, 
concentration. Number one, Spencer. Spencer is from Merritt Island, Florida. He's a junior as well and played with Derrick Brown, the brilliant tight end of Notre Dame. And uh, also Hurley Brown, uh, starting safety for Miami. So that must have been some team at Merritt Island. Snyder's punt off the side of his foot, but it's going to be a good roll and well covered. Now Nebraska will start at the seven yard line. 5.56 left in the third, Miami by 19. Back at the Orange Bowl, where number one Miami leads 19 0. Late in the third, and Nebraska starts from its seven yard line. And the give inside to Lance Lewis, the fullback, not much there. Well, it's, it's, it's almost like there's a certain contempt by that Miami defense for the Nebraska offense. They're just they're just slamming into everything. They know they're not going to be fooled. Lewis, the ball carrier. Uh, a reverse play of, of some kind, a play pass of some kind, Tackle something where the quarterback rolls out and runs. That's good. But right now, Miami's just attacking the ball, just attacking. Second and one nine. yard on that rush that gives Nebraska the Mason's number one rushing team remember 14 yards total tonight Larry Jones has 125 alone for Miami McCamp Go ahead and run. caught from behind it's Madaris again he's having a feast officially his fourth sack tonight Anthony Hamlet has one as well, a total of five for the Canes. Well, again, you'll see Madera's coming all the way around. But you see, he's very quick, very explosive. But Ken Keegan, McCant is holding the ball too long. He should decide to run or decide to throw, but he just can't hold that ball. He, know, he knows Madera's is going to be coming. He knows he's going to be there. And one thing you could do is put a tight end over on Madera's side to slow him down somewhat. Really in a hole now. McCann throwing along the sidelines, and Dixon not even close to the ball. And now Stiggy will have to kick from short range. He'll not have the full 15 yards. The defense of Miami is something to behold. Well, the one factor that hasn't shown up is McCant running with the football. Now, that hasn't shown up at all tonight, and it could very well have helped out some. And I certainly couldn't even intimate that it would change the outcome of the game, but it could have helped. Oh, Sticky has to make sure that he doesn't step out of the end zone for a safety, and Kevin Williams is all the way up to the Nebraska 32. Under the circumstances, a good kick to the 37. And Kevin Williams by an ankle down at the 37-yard line. 35-yard punt, two yards on the return, and Miami in good field position again with 4.17 left in the third, and they're pitching a shutout. Long night for the senior Keith and McCant. Nine rushes, five of those are sacks, and the sack total counts against your rushing total, and it's a minus 32, so that gives Nebraska, as a team, a plus eight yards this is a club that uh, averaged over 353 yards a game and 6.5 a carry First by far and away, the best in the nation. Think but of averaging 506 yards a game total. My gosh. And yet uh, totally shut down by the high-speed defense of Miami tonight. Coretta under the rush and he gets it to Thomas and it's in and out of his hands. And the rain that uh, continues Coretta's to fall, however lightly, Perhaps affecting those uh, glue-like grabs that we saw in practice from the Miami receivers. Well, Lamar also knows he's going to have a big play if he does catch it. He's thinking of running prior to getting hold of the ball. Meanwhile, just you open spaces out there. You saw Toretta's discuss not with Thomas, but with another penalty flag holding Miami. Holding. holding. Offense. Offense. Ten yards ball from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Oh, the penalty yardage well over 100 against Dennis Erickson's Canes. You know, Der Dennis Erickson now, you know, there are military families who are sort of military brass. Well, he's from a coaching family, right? His dad, Pink, high school coach. Miami, he he uh, didn't coach him in Everett, Washington. He coached at the rival school. Right. He lost the first two to his dad. He won the next four. They played each other twice a year. Then in coaching, he was uh, in, in competition with his dad. 
Good pressure again. A catch. No. Out of bounds this time was Williams as he worked on Tyrone Hughes. The uh, man on a really accelerated course in defensive back coverage. Oh, boy. <laughs> Man, oh, what a write test! A book after this one, huh? what a, yeah, here's a kid the never played notes. DB uh, Tyrone Hughes, and he gets two weeks to prepare, and his final exam is against Miami. <laughs> well, as Paul Brown used to say, he doesn't know what he doesn't know. Boy, if he realized what he's in against. But you know, uh, Erickson has had great training to get to this point in his career. People like uh, Jack Elway and Jim Sweeney. Yeah. Second and 25 underneath the Williams. Got away from Hughes, and Hughes came back to make the tackle at the 35 yard line, where it'll be third down and eight. Bird helped out. Pass is you know, my, my impression Williams. of uh, Erickson Tyrone came when he was the coach at Washington eight, State. Tyrone I had not seen Washington State play for a number of years, game and I saw one televised yards. game. I didn't know Erickson, but I knew this. That co that football team was well coached. He did a beautiful job there. Now, I'm sure he's doing a great job here, but I can tell you this. When he was in Idaho and Washington State in Wyoming, he did a magnificent the job there. Yeah, those, uh, some of those programs didn't have a reputation of being a big winner, and he made them. Cougars in Washington State particularly won nine games the second year there, taking the losing team. Toretta goes down, and uh, that will be a sack for Nebraska. Charging through for the Huskers was number 84, Donta Jones. Tackle by number 84, Donta Jones. The attendance has been announced, 77,747 on a rainy New Year's Day in Miami, Florida. The all-time attendance over 81,000 last year when Carlos Colorado and Notre Dame battled for the national title. 54-yard attempt by Huerta. If he makes it, it'll be his longest in his brilliant career at Miami. 52, the previous high. He's got the distance. It's good. Huerta makes it 22 to nothing. Well, all great teams seem to have a great kicker. And this is what you've got right here. Huerta walk on to an All-America. And Dennis Erickson, boy, when that left uh, Huerta's foot, he knew that had plenty of distance. And it's 22 to nothing. Three for three is Huerta tonight. And for the year, 20 for 20. Five. The, the air has to be heavy. What a kick. From the west, looking into the Orange Bowl with the city of Miami off in the distance. And Carlos Huerta, in his final game at the University of Miami, has kicked his longest field goal, 54 yards, to give the Canes a 22-0 lead. It's not an Orange Bowl record. Greg Cox for Miami against Oklahoma four years ago hit a 56-yarder. Huerta, strong leg, down to Turner at the two. back to the 10 as C.J. Richardson makes another special teams tackle. Nate Turner returns the ball. The tackle by number Well, 19. a lot of uh, discussion is uh, Richardson, who made the tackle, injured on the play. And let's see how it happened. He's in good shape to First make the tackle. From the that arm reaching out, that left arm catches the knee. He didn't realize he was injured. He started to celebrate and uh, then the pain. He's only a freshman from Dallas. He's uh, been switched from free safety to fullback because of the problems at fullback, running out of personnel, and just been an absolute star on special teams. Well, Dennis Erickson, obviously with his success here, 33 and three in his three years in Miami, and a bright football offensive mind, uh, there's talk about him becoming an NFL coach, or rumors at least, but he denied he's had any calls. Well, I think even if he had calls, he has a son, Bryce, that's a junior in high school here. He's moved a lot in his career. Dennis Erickson has 
been from, a no, well, as you know, a number of schools, including Wyoming, Montana Black State, Burnett. Washington State, San Jose State, and of course he's here at Miami, and I just don't think he wants to move his family again, at least for a while. He's very happy here, ideally suited uh, for this program, and, but I do think, honestly, Dick, that at some point he'll be an NFL coach. It might be five years, and he'll be a great one. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. Rob Zadiska trying to stop Rusty Madaris, and uh, Madaris had a little move, and, and that drew the penalty against Nebraska. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. I understand that John Dockery First is located. Uh, Pink Erickson, who coached for over 35 years, high school and college, and will go to those gentlemen right after this play. First and 15. And it's Calvin Jones with a little daylight out to the 14-yard line. Let's meet Pink Erickson. Thank you, Dick. Um, Pink, I understand that you and uh, Dennis competed against one another. What was that like? Well, we had two high schools in the city of Everett, where I'm from, Everett, Washington. And that's been a tough place to be here the last six weeks. He played at uh, one school, and I coached at the other. What was he like as a quarterback? He beat me three times. That says it all, doesn't it? No, he was a good little quarterback. He played at Montana State, and a lot of his Montana State friends here tonight. Did you? Did he always have an inclination towards coaching? Did you think he would follow in your footsteps in the same profession? I think from the very beginning he wanted to be a coach. Could have been basketball, but football was his favorite. Football was his favorite. Do you think someday he'll go on to be a professional coach? I think that's a possibility down the road. I don't think it's, it's going to happen early, but it, it might down the road. Thank you, Pink. Dick? All right. Pink Erickson watches Calvin Jones on the toss off the option from McCann and a good gain out near the 20-yard line. Uh, what... Uh, Mr. Uh, Erickson was alluding to the last uh, five weeks being tough in Everett, Washington. Remember, he's rooting for Miami right. where his son coaches and University of Washington right down the road. Well, the, the state of Washington fully mobilized for their football programs, just as the state of Florida is, no question about it. And there's a lot of emotion involved. But I think uh, Dennis uh, Erickson's background with his dad in, in one sense, but also Jim Sweeney, Third down and one, and not even close to the line of scrimmage as Eric Miller and Mark Caesar invade the backfield. There's hail to Caesar as he makes the stop for a loss. Well, they're underway before the Nebraska offensive line is underway. They're beating them to the punch. It's that simple. Uh, the blockers were no factor on that play. Now you'll see people penetrate right through the entire offensive group. Caesar's a 290-pound junior from Newark, New Jersey. But I think Jim Sweeney has had as much impact on Erickson as anybody. Sweeney's the, the great coach at Fresno State. And then Jack Elway's offense. Kevin Williams with a punt. And twisted down by Johnny Mitchell, the Kevin tight Williams end. And a flag is down. I think Jack Elway's offense at San Jose State, when Dennis worked for him, has had major impact. One way or the other, you've got a great coach and a great Miami team. I'll wait for the signal on this penalty as Kevin Williams twisted down and one of his Mark teammates uh, yards. opposed that hit. And the officials uh, saw something they didn't like and it'll cost Miami another 15 and the penalty yards continue to mount. Well, if, if we're looking at comparative scores as a way to name a national champion, it's not working Flipping. out. Flipping on the return. On the return. 15 yards to the spot of the foul. First down. It's not working out for Miami tonight. They're just not getting on the scoreboard uh, related to how well they're playing. 28 seconds left in the third quarter, leading 22 to nothing. And that penalty is the 11th suffered by Miami tonight for 138 yards. At over 200, 202 exactly in the Cotton Bowl against Texas last year. I, I know score. this, if I were at that blackboard, I couldn't help him, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Fake to Williams and Toretta to throw, and it's almost intercepted in the arms of Curtis Cotton, but he dropped it. 
Scott and the senior from Omaha. Toretta's and Toretta took a pretty good shot from Ed Stewart, who came through on a blitz. Well, it was the play pass, and you can't effectively pass protect that with extra rushers. And he's outside, sort of fair game. He throws the ball. Oh, then he's hit. Now that's see, that's the kind of thing I believe the 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 uh, referee should step in on. The ball was clearly thrown. And it happens in the National Football League, and it happens at the collegiate level. Somehow, the referee overlooks the situations where the quarterback has thrown the ball clearly and then is hit. And it's really the responsibility of the defensive man to know whether he's got the ball or not. That's just part of the game. And yet, they, they overlook that so the game often. For Miami. Frank Costa, the freshman Number from Philadelphia, threw 25 passes, as you can see, three intercepted. They like him a lot. He uh, reminds Miami players and coaches of uh, Vinny Testaverde, not only in size and ability, but his looks. He hands off inside to Larry Jones, who stacked up John Perella, 92, and up from the safety spot, Ernie Beeler, Travis Hill as well. There's young Costa. He's 6'4 and 214 pounds, and anyone wearing a... Uh, uh, the uniform of Miami playing that position quarterback. You just mm. think of that whole legacy, that litany of tremendous talent. We'll run that down for you when we come That's back. The That's the end of three at the Orange Bowl. We go to the fourth quarter and the Miami signal of four in fingers in indicating University that uh, that Miami. quarter belongs to them. Number 13. The other three have tonight. 22 nothing as we go to the final period. Would, uh, unless some incredible development uh, and 12 from the should Miami transpire, 28. it would appear we'll have two major unbeaten teams, Washington and Miami 12-0, both perhaps uh, equally deserving of a number one ranking. Maybe that's how it all worked out. Third and 12. And Toretta back in, and it's intercepted by Tyrone Leggett, and he's twisted down at the 45 by Lamar Thomas, and that was a good by tackle by three. Thomas because uh, Leggett had some open field. That's the first time I've seen uh, Gino miss a pass, and this is the fifth time we've watched them work. This game, of course, but in practice also. He hasn't done that yet. That could have something to do with that blow he got, that shot he took. But for whatever reason, it was 10 feet over the receiver's head. That's the second interception by Leggett tonight. And Nebraska takes over at the Miami 44-yard line. For Nebraska, first and 10 from the Miami 44. There's got to be something in the playbook for Nebraska now. There's got to be something they can reach and get. They're in an unbalanced line to the left. Calvin Jones, the eye back. Four. And Jones, just as uh, Toretta follows the, the line of great quarterbacks uh, for the last 10 years, it started with Kelly and Kozar and Hester Verde and Steve Walsh and Craig Erickson. So it is on the Nebraska side that uh, you talk about the great 1,000-yard rushing eye backs. Derek Brown joining a sensational list for Nebraska. Started back... Uh, in the Osborne era with I.M. Hip. Second down, the throw. Intercepted. And this is Hurley Brown. One man to beat McCamp. And he saves the touchdown. Intercepted by number eight, Hurley Brown. Brown, who had only one interception all year. And a flag is down back at midfield. Well, the ball just was lobbed over to the receiver. So there's all kind of all kind of time yards. to get over there and make the play by Brown. It was it was the interception you think about the night before the game when you turn out the lights. I mean, it was just there, hanging out there. 52 yards on the return if. Face mask against Nebraska, so the return counts, and they'll tack on some yardage. Well, we'll take a look at, at the... He threw it up high and over the head. Part of it were people in McCant's face. And this is what we were talking about earlier, that had this happened to Toretta, he might have had problems. But in this case, the... 
defenders got their hands up, and the ball had to be thrown over the high extended hands. And you can imagine how Osborne feels. He'll have to travel back to Lincoln, and there's really no way to explain it. I just think the football in Florida has gotten just a, a, by degree a better form of football than is played in the Big 8 at this time. Well, a lot of great athletes 20 years ago from the state would go north to the right. Big 8 and the Big 10. They're staying home to play at Florida State and Florida and Miami now. Delay and the give to Jones caught from the backside on a good play by Trev Alberts. And he's been one of the shining lights for Nebraska tonight. This sophomore, and they think very highly of him. A very bright student, a 3-3-4 in business administration. He's 235 pounds. He played uh, not full-time and yet was their number eight tackler. And he led them in sacks and was second in tackles for a loss. Trev Alberts, remember that Nebraska name. Loss on the play of nearly three. Second and goal from the 12. 13 and a half minutes left in the fourth. 22 nothing to score. Toretta for Lamar Thomas, or is that? Oh, now that was uh, Copeland, Horace Copeland leaping high. And as we told you earlier, as a seven foot high jumper, he can sky, unable to bring it in. Leggett, Leggett, the defender. Is, uh, you know, can take a little pride in that play because he just hung right in there. Because Copeland, of all the receivers, can go up. Look how high he is in the air. Look at his legs. He's got to be 40, 40, 45 inches in the air. And it's the, this this uh, agility, sort of ability to make the acrobatic catch that's carried Miami through the years. These splendid athletes. Third and goal. Again, in Columbia, South Carolina. Played well in the toughest of circumstances. A lot of it just man coverage. Underneath and incomplete to Daryl Spencer. So on fourth down and goal, in comes Huerta to try for his fourth field goal. He connected on short ones in the first quarter of 27 and 24 yards and then set a personal high with a 54 yard field goal in the third. Well, I didn't get a chance to see much at all of the Rose Bowl, but this is not really an artistic performance tonight by Miami. They're a great football team, but, but from the standpoint of uh, playing great football, it's just it's one of those nights. We're done. Another, and it's no, four, no, he just missed it. 13, 12 to From go. a tough angle, and of course, uh, as we told you earlier, Huerta had made 157 points after in a row that snap this year, and uh, now he misses for only the fifth time on a field goal. The 1992 Federal Express Orange Bowl is brought to you by Federal Express. All around the world, our most important package is yours. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Magnavox. Smart choices for smart people. The ingenious products from Magnavox. They're smart, very smart. And by Delta Airlines. We love to fly, and it shows. Let's check that last field goal attempt by Huerta. It appeared to be a bad snap, yes. But I think Mike Anderson, oh no, number three coming around to, from the outside, Leggett, I think also caused a little distraction there as far as that. You see, he's unblocked, and he makes a heck of an effort. And that, in a sense, threw the timing off and, the, and distracted Huerta just enough to miss. So it's 22-0 as Huerta, who was 17 for 21 on the regular season, is 3 for 4 tonight. This is a short one there at 29 yards. Nebraska with 13 minutes left. Can they deny the shutout? Calvin Jones gets a couple. Armstead and others on the tackle. Uh, Miami had one Calvin shutout Jones this year. And that was over uh, Cal State Long Beach, a school that has dropped its football program. 55 nothing, but they denied uh, three other opponents from scoring a touchdown. Arkansas got only a field goal, losing 31-3. Oklahoma State just three points in a 43 Miami win. And West Virginia scored only three in a 27-6 Canes triumph. There's the option pass. And complete to uh, Nate Turner. Pass is complete. Number 27. And that'll be good for a first down. And for Nebraska, it has been a long time since they've been shut out. We'll check the exact uh, numbers on that. 
220 consecutive games since 1973. Oklahoma was the last team to shut out Nebraska. So there's something else at stake just in that regard for Tom Osborne and his players and all the fans in Nebraska. They want to keep that uh, run going, uh, at least scoring something. McCann elects not to run and finally throws it away. See, McCann is not attempting to run the football. He's not attacking the line of scrimmage with any, with any thought of running. No, it could be his ankle. And that, in a sense, though, is limiting what uh, Osborne is getting out of his quarterback because there isn't any threat of run on those sprint out passes. And uh, when, you can, when you can average uh, almost six yards a carry as a rusher, it's, you know, it's just not a masterpiece game for Miami. As great a team as they are, uh, this is not a game you'd want to be judged as number one off of, off of uh, but they are certainly a superior team to Nebraska. A draw to Calvin Jones and right there. And there may have been a fumble, and Miami says they have... ま、元気なくなりましたね。そうですね。Ladies and gentlemen, we are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. Uh. All right, as you can see, we're having a little bit of a technical problem, a little late in the evening. Uh, your reaction right now to Miami and what's going on, and uh, the Huskers uh They're having a technical problem. Out. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> they really are. You know, it, it, it's, it's strange, and, and, and you watch it year after year, and you see teams like Nebraska who and Oklahoma who predominantly run the football, and this is what they do in the Big Eight, all right? Now you go down and you play a team like Miami that throws the ball all over the place, their defense, number one, very rarely sees that kind of an offense. So when it's it's almost like a mismatch. We can't see it. All right, I. S so you know when, when, Yeah. So when 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 you when you look at uh, a, a team like Nebraska, I think they're mismatched against a team like Miami or Florida State or Florida or any team that throws the ball. They have a problem with it. Okay. All right. As you can see, there's a, a picture we have up now. There is a power problem. We don't know exactly the source of that power problem. Okay. All right. I understand we've lost the NBC feed, and we are now taking the Japanese feed. Paul, perhaps you can help us with that. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would like to. I mean, this is we're, 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 yeah, I, I can't do anything in Japanese. What do I know? Nothing. I, you know, I did some games in Tokyo, but I, I don't know anything I can do in Japanese. But I, I, I know no matter what okay. the country well, seems. Well, let me, let's, yeah, let's review a little bit of what's happening. Of course, it's 20, 22 nothing uh, Hurricanes, of course, leading the Huskers. Well, right when you now. look at it, it's just, it's just total dominance of uh, not only offensively, but I think surprising to Nebraska that Miami, uh, their defense has just totally shut down Nebraska's running game. 
And, you know, when you and I talked before this game about who had the advantage was Miami because, again, it, the field is wet. It has been raining. The receivers know where they're going. Offense always knows where it's going. And it, it puts a lot of pressure on the defensive secondary. And when, when you take a, a, a look at Miami, they just are doing whatever they want to do offensively. And if it wasn't for the penalties, this game would be like 50 to nothing. Mm -hmm. We've been looking at, uh, at Gino Toretta. What is your evaluation of him? Toretta as, is... As he it, compares, you know, in the, law, in the long and storied history of Miami quarterbacks. Well, when you, when you, he's got a great offensive line in super receivers. Now, I'm, I'm not taking anything away from the quarterback, Toretta, but watch, when he sets up, he knows right. that he has receivers all over the field. More than one's going to be open. But the nice thing I like about it, take a look at this play here, where go. he runs out of trouble. He's got quick feet. He reads right away. He tucks the ball down. Uh, there has been a couple interceptions in a ball game, but but mostly you'll see Toretta. He will protect the ball. Uh, there was a there was a time when he threw the ball out of the end zone to save the interception. I mean, he's just. Uh, I, I think he's a very heady quarterback, and, and a guy does a great job. But again, you're looking at at, a, at an offense that is comparable to some of the some of the pro teams. I think this offense is better than the Indianapolis Colts. All right, here's Toretta again. Again, running away, and out of bounds. Well, that's, right. you know, that's the replay of the, replay. Of the play with, with mm -hmm. Toretta, and, and they show you the quick feet. He doesn't hesitate. If, if uh, the pressure is on him, he gets himself out of trouble, and, and you've got to like that, or he'll throw the ball away, and he rarely, he rarely does throw a bad pass. Okay. Wait, by the way, there are 10 minutes and 25 seconds left in this quarter ball. <laughs> How much jeopardy do you know? <laughs> let me, let, let me uh, do re uh, repeat some scoring for you. First of all, Gino Toretta, eight-yard touchdown pass to Kevin Williams. That put the Canes on top, 7 nothing. Kevin Williams, an outstanding player for uh, the Miami Hurricanes. Carlos Huerta, uh, two field goals, one for 24 yards, another for 24 yards. That made it 13 nothing. Miami scoring on its first three possessions of the game. Larry Jones then a one-yard touchdown run, and of course they've been able to hang in there with their uh, backfield. You know, McGuire is not in there, and uh, they've had uh, they've had their problems. And Larry Jones is in there, and he's certainly done his share to uh, keep things going. We're to also a 54-yard field goal, so he's had a good night, 22 nothing. And I think again, Gail, when you when you really look at it, if it if it uh, weren't for the penalties against the uh, Miami Hurricanes. Uh, I can guarantee you that, that uh, this game would be somewhere near the 50s. There have been a lot of uh, uh, dumb penalties. All right, after that punt, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back with more right after this. 22 nothing Miami. Stay with us. All right, of course, we again apologize for the technical problems we are having from Miami. As you can see, the Canes leading Nebraska 22 to nothing. There are about nine minutes left in the game, actually 8.56 left in the game. And the Huskers with the ball. That's Mickey Joseph at quarterback. And Joseph back to pass. That's the wing back, Vincent Hawkins, and he gets the yeah. ball to the outside. But you're looking at, uh, they made a change uh, with McCants, and I think the change should, you know, could have come earlier. Gail, the biggest problem is that he just, uh, McCants had no time to throw the football. The pressure was on him at all, at all times. And, you know, to say, okay, they should have changed quarterbacks earlier, I don't think so. You go with the guy that brought you this far, and that's McCants, so you, you play him. Uh, Joseph is in in the game now, but I mean that's just a change that you make. It's not. I don't think there was an injury. We at least we didn't see one. Right, Joseph again. Calvin. Uh, that's Calvin Jones, his uh, running back, and he he's been doing very well. Uh, unfortunately, the rest of the team hasn't. You know the most difficult thing about doing a game like this? Mm -hmm. You don't hear anything. <laughs> I mean, you don't hear the sounds and the And here's a team that's just trying to stay in the game. They know how important this game is, Nebraska, because, you know, you're looking at number one and, and, and the national title. Oh, and also, Paul, uh, you know, we're talking about a shutout here. 
And the last thing Tom Osborne wanted to be was shut out in the Orange Bowl. There's no doubt about, about that. Well, there's, you know, there's just no question about that. They'd like to put some points on the board. I think Hand that they... And off to Calvin Jones once again as he goes out of bounds. Yeah, and I think they realize the fact that the game, you know, uh, uh, is, as much as, as hard as they've been playing, the game is, is pretty much in the hands of Miami. And they would like to look good. When, and then, when you know, we the controversy has been going on all day long is who is number one. And uh, we already know Washington's. They won by 24. So, you know, they believe that they have a share. There's 828 remaining in this game. Scores 22 nothing Miami. But the the one thing is if, if if Nebraska can get on the board here and obviously would have to go for two, get them back in the ball game. Now we saw something in 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 the uh, earlier today in, in one of the games the Penn State game that they were they looked like they were totally dominated in the first half by yeah, Tennessee. That was Lance Lewis on the carry. But yet they come back and they win the they win the ball game handedly. So I mean things can turn around in a ball game. I I, I don't see that uh, with Nebraska in this game, but I, I think they can make it a little bit closer than what it what it is now. And this is no time to be thinking field goal. They're all thinking they're thinking nothing but touchdown here. Okay, eight minutes left to go. Well, eight twelve. Fumble. And uh, Miami recovers. Number 95 is Eric Miller, defensive tackle, but recovering this, for Miami. So that's kind of how things are going for the Huskers this oh, It's been going this way all night long. And again, the only thing, the one thing that's kept Miami uh, from, from running up the score, and I'll repeat myself again, has been penalties and, and mistakes that they've made. And again, Nebraska, uh, the, the mistakes are created by the Miami Hurricanes. All right. 7.43 left to play. We're number one. Well, we're certainly going to find that out pretty soon. And they certainly displayed that by their exhibition tonight. 22 nothing again in the fourth quarter. A little over seven minutes left to play. And the Huskers with the fumble. So Miami again with the ball. Larry Jones carrying the fullback. And he really picked up the load today with Martin Patton out because he was... Uh, um, he had the problem with the credit card uh, fraud situation that he was involved in. And, of course, uh, Stephen McGuire injured as well. So Larry Jones carrying the burden of the running game for the Miami Hurricanes. And that's, that's a pretty big deal this evening. Well over 100 yards. And you ready for this? Nebraska has not scored a touchdown in the last two meetings against Miami. And if this continues this way... Uh, that is not a good sign. Larry Jones again. They're just going to try to r run the clock out now, it looks like. Hand off to Larry Jones and just take as much time off the clock as possible. They have this one won. There's no doubt about that. And then a big question comes up. Mm -hmm. Who's number one? All right, let's look at it realistically. And, and who would you vote for? Well, I, I would have to go. I'd have to split the vote. I mean, I, uh, I think they both deserve it. All right, Washington wins big This by 24. This team is going to win by at least 22. I think for the second year in a row, we, we should have a split championship, and I think that's probably what we will see. Well, we got 725 or so left in the, in the Sugar Around Bowl the game. Around the left side. Let's keep them up to date on everything. Florida took the lead back in the Sugar Bowl 1917 right, against Spencer, Notre Dame. Darryl that's their tailback running out of bounds. He swept the left side well that's one of the things you don't want to do in a game like this of course until he gets inside of five minutes the, the clock uh, once they spot the ball the clock starts again but you do stop the clock for a short period of time by oh, running yeah. out of bounds also want to tell you that at the sugar ball that's going on right now florida leading notre dame by the score of 1917 1342 left in that game Okay. All right, that was Jason Marucci. Let's go back to Here at Dick. Here the Orange Bowl in Miami, Enberg. we apologize. We had a my major power two failure two that knocked out all of our television pictures and sounds as well as the 25-second clocks. And uh, now using the one camera available, Japanese television, Telemundo, covering this uh, Orange Bowl game, uh, that's their one camera, and borrowing our feed. And since our cameras were all knocked off with the 
total failure, power failure. That's all you've been able to watch. We thank you for your patience. Keno Toretta, the Miami quarterback, guiding his Hurricanes 22 0 with five and a half minutes left in this the final quarter. And that's Jason Marucci, the backup fullback, who is driving forward into the grasp of Pat Engelbert at the Nebraska 46 yard line, a gain of uh, a good five. I just think it's general fatigue at this point on the part of uh, both teams, but especially Nebraska's defensive line, their, def their linebackers are playing with a lot of heart. They're sure in the ball game mentally, but they're starting to have it taken out of them a little bit now. And uh, Dennis Erickson just calling the same straight running play. Larry Jones and now Jason Marucci taking the ball off tackle and just hammering for four and five yards of the shot. Here we go again. Marucci again off tackle and slashing in to make the stop as Ernie Stewart. Stewart with a lot of tackles. He's a 195 pound freshman from Mount Carmel High School in Chicago. Plays. Uh, he's a safety really playing in there as a nickel linebacker. Right, they wanted him there to help cover some of those quick receivers. But Erickson made a point with us. He does not pour it on. He does not look for ways to somehow eke out another three or six or seven points. Uh, and Miami's had a little history of that in previous regimes. Uh, but Erickson just doesn't believe in it. And uh, as a former coach, I certainly appreciate that, that uh, sensitivity. On third and two, Fullback Marucci greeted by half the Nebraska defense for coming up number eight from safety to help out. And he stopped shy of the first down. Remember that even though this is not an overwhelming victory for Miami, 22 0, and they, as you put it, artistically, it wasn't necessarily a beautiful effort, but they have shut out a team that was the number three scoring team in the country. And they've shut down totally the running of a team that goes far and away the best running the ball average total yards per game. So the defense of Miami, the offense perhaps is stuttered and self-destructed by penalty, but the defense is most impressive. Jones back in there, and on fourth down, he has the first down at the Nebraska 41-yard line. Uh, just think of the shock of Osborne coming in averaging over 40 points a game over 11 games and he can't even get close enough to kick a short field goal i mean that demonstrates the quickness of this miami defense and the talent First down for miami. So I, I don't think it, it was a great game plan on osborne's part necessarily uh, but he used the weapons he did have they're, they're good enough for the big eight but not for these florida schools florida football is just supreme across the country right now. Just look at all the professional rosters, look at the rankings of the Florida team. Down and a give to Marucci. And a young man from Youngstown, Ohio, out of bounds at the Nebraska 37. Well, with the weather, we didn't have the full service of all those beautiful aerial shots, but we're pleased here in the second half that the airship Shamu has joined us on NBC. Airship uh, Shamu, a goodwill ambassador for SeaWorld in Orlando and its sister parks in Texas, California, and Ohio. 2.45 left in the fourth period. Miami, certainly uh, very impressive statistically in terms of yardage while stopping the Nebraska offense. Caught in the backfield, Marucci, as Dumas, a freshman, flashes through to make the tackle, and John tackle, Dockery still with us down on the sideline. Thank you, Dick, and this is the National Championship uh, Trophy, uh, Waterford Crystal from Ireland, presented by McDonald's to the top team in the country. Now, there was a replica of this out at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena today, and right now, in the poll, the USA CNN poll, coaches poll, there is a tie between Washington and Miami. So it'll be interesting to see when the votes come in where it stands after this. But right now, there, there is a tie. And if it remained that way, both schools would get a trophy like this. Back to you, Dick. Thank you, Doc. Toretta. Comes to Lamar Thomas. And uh, Tyrone Hughes right there at the 35-yard line. And that'll bring up fourth down and four. You know, the passing game, the proficiency of it, uh, by Miami in all the, the good weather schools, so to speak. Uh, so many of these guys go to summer school that help them toward graduation. 
but my guess is after summer school classes are over, they're out on the field practicing, timing their passing. And that's one thing you can do uh, to develop a football team from a passing standpoint is practice without it really being an organized practice. You get a lot of work done. Fourth and four, Larry Jones back in there, and he bowls close to the 30-yard line, and it would appear from the mark that he has the first down, and now Miami can run out the clock. David White and Mike Petko make the tackle, and it is noteworthy, uh, Larry Jones, who will get our vote as the most viable player, over 140 yards rushing today, 142, says Elliot Kalb, our statistician, on 30 carries for this freshman. Boy, you talk about depth, they lose Stephen McGuire, Martin Patton. Here's a freshman, 235-pounder, that gets a chance to play his first start ever and as a Miami Hurricane and a very impressive talent. Well, uh, not much said often because of the great receiving on the part of the Miami team, but the offensive line uh, in itself is one of the best in college football, and these are all active people. They don't have the biggest offensive line in college football, but they most likely have the quickest, most active and athletic offensive line. Patrick and Medeiros, uh, two defensive linemen looking for Dennis Erickson, I would presume. As we're down to the final minute of this Orange Bowl 1992, and Marucci into the middle to the 26-yard line. Number 22, Jason Marucci, the ball carrier. Tackle by number 31, Steve Carver. We are going to go quickly at the final gun uh, for a break, and there's uh, Erickson's <laughs> ice water bath, but. Uh, it would appear a shutout to complete another perfect year. Only three losses in three seasons. It'll be the 45th consecutive win for Miami here in the Orange Bowl. Their 18th in a row, the longest current winning streak in college football. And uh, their band can justifiably cry for their share of number one. It's Fred and Neil Sound, and that'll do it. They celebrate in Miami. The Hurricanes complete an unbeaten year, 22-0. To hand Nebraska Congratulations. Thanks, John. The question Thank everyone's asking, who should the national champion be now? Well, we won convincingly. I mean, it's up to the voters. I don't know. All, I, all we can ask is what our players did, and we played great on defense and shut Nebraska out and won by 22 points, and uh, we played a great football game. Now it's up to the voters. I can't well, say anything baby. other than that. Would you be willing to share it with Washington? They're a great football team, sure. You know, but we're, who knows how voters are going to vote? I know that whoever of the two doesn't get it's going to feel pretty sorry, so... Two great football teams, two teams that are undefeated, which is very hard to do, and I congratulate Don and, and uh, University of Washington. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Dick Enberg, back to you. So a man who grew up near Seattle, Washington, and Everett, Dennis Erickson migrates to Miami, looks for his second national title in three years, and basically hopes that he can share with Don James, and somehow that would seem the right way to go. Toretta and most of that offense will be back next year and so will the defense and it was the defense most impressive tonight a 22 nothing shutout for Miami the first whitewash suffered by Nebraska in over well over 200 games going all the way back to 1973 our thanks to Ted Pizza Gala from Miami Chris Anderson and Calvin the booth for their help and let's see Bill what do you hey I tell you what I got plans for you this weekend on Saturday I want you to join me in our suite if you will as we watch the Denver Broncos take on the Houston Oilers as the AFC Championship Divisional Playoffs are here on NBC. 3.30 is for NFL Live to start that. And then, I uh, hope you'll join me. It's got nothing better to do. We'll be in Buffalo anyway, so why don't we do the Bills game as we'll they host the... We'll be through town. Why not take a look at the ball? Okay. And the chicken wings are on Paul McGuire. That'll be at... Uh, 
12.30 Eastern Time on Sunday. And tonight's show starring Johnny Carson coming up, followed by Late Night with David Letterman and later with Bob Costas. Once again, our final score, Miami 22, Nebraska nothing. For Bill Walsh, this is Dick Benberg. For all of us at NBC Sports, again, a happy new year and congratulations to the 1992 Orange Bowl champions, the Miami Hurricanes.